counter play inside, picking his way back to the 10, to the 5. And it's time for high school sports right here on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by August Edge Real Estate, Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Doghouse Motorsports, Global Car Care, The Highlander Golf Course and Grill, JDSA Law, Laura Mounter Real Estate, Les Schwab Tires, One Way Construction, Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln, Save Mart, Sangster Motors, Wenatchee Power Sports, Earthwise Pet, and Chelan Douglas Casa. And now let's get ready for high school sports. It starts now on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Good evening and welcome to Wildcat Stadium along with Grant Olson. I'm Eric Grandstrom here on the NCW Life Channel. Ready for another night of football on a Friday as the Afraid of Tigers come visit the East Mall Wildcats. Both teams at 2-1. and one. Both teams ran into Buzzsaw in the form of the Royal Knights. Who hasn't <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, going to be an interesting one. It's kind of a rematch of these teams used to play back in the day. It's been a while, but, uh, you know, East Mall keeps to seem like they're improving week after week, Grant. And I'll tell you what, an Afraid of team coming in here, Eric, with a lot of experience 20 seniors on this roster all 11 starters on offense yeah. seniors so I don't know if that makes a big difference but I think it may make bring some confidence to the Tiger team coming into a big stadium and you like and this. I were talking about this we've been around high school football for a long time a long time <laughs> and I've never seen an entire offense again, with seniors people. never I speaking never of seniors we are celebrating the seniors oh, here tonight and they're going to recognize 12 seniors for the uh, Wildcats tonight. let's go to Pat Haley right now for the announcement of those 12 seniors. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to direct your attention to the north end of the stadium where the Eastmont High School and Athletic Department would like to recognize our senior football players along with their families for all their time, support, and commitment to Eastmont Wildcat football. Let's begin with number five, Dylan Baby D Esparza. He's accompanied by his mom, Zenia, dad, Juan, and brother, Preston. Our next senior, number eight, Oscar Mago, accompanied by his mom, Victorina, and brother, Gustavo. Our next senior, number 19, Chance Garcia, accompanied by his mom, Julia, Julie, his dad, Brian, and his brother, Caleb. Our next senior, number 33, Tyler Kazin, accompanied by his mom, Crystal, and Kurt, along with sister, Ashley. Our next senior, number 54, Wyatt Erdman. Accompanied by his mom, Susan, his dad, Jason, and sister, Maggie. Our next senior, number 55, Yahir Oriano. Accompanied by his mom, Patty. Our next senior, number 60, Gildardo Elias, accompanied by a coach. Our next senior, number 65, Braden Falkers, accompanied by his mom, Jennifer, dad, Alex, brother, Levi, and sister, Evelyn. Our next senior, number 73, Chris Allen, accompanied by his mom, Abby. Our next senior, number 77, John Corona, accompanied by his mom, Humbalina, his dad, 
Angel and his brother Ivan. Our next senior, number 88, Jack Benmanson. Accompanied by his mom, Barb, and his dad, Gary. And our final senior on senior recognition night, number 92, Max Brazier. Accompanied by his mom, Carly, his dad, Matt, and his sister, Ellie. Let's give a big hand to these seniors, along with their parents, and thank them for their participation in Eastmont High School Athletics. There you go. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to the seniors. Recognition of them tonight, and strangely, only the second home game of the season for Eastmont. Yet that's their last game at home <laughs> here of the season. Let's talk about this game tonight, Grant. Uh, you've got a team. Well, two teams that like to run the football. This could be a quick game tonight. That's what I'm thinking too. It's definitely, I think, I shouldn't say definitely, but I think it's going to be ground and pound, pound for Eastmont tonight for sure. We're going to see a lot of Ivan Corona. Uh, Ruffins is hurt tonight, so that could make yeah. a difference in the Eastmont running game. But they're still loaded with players that can run the football. Well, you're going to see two freshmen in the backfield on the offensive side for Eastmont. Uh, of course, you've got Luke Gale that's running the offensive quarterback now, a freshman. <laughs> and then you also have a freshman that's going to be one of the wingbacks tonight. Uh, and and so it's it's just one of those odd years where you just got to kind of make it up as you go. And, you know, it's weird for us too, Eric, because we don't know anything about Afredo. We don't cover their games. We haven't in the past. So we don't know really what they're bringing in other than a common opponent, Royal, like who's we said. Royal's been rolling everybody this season. So it's hard to really gauge right. really what we've got here tonight, but it looks like I think Afraid is going to pass a little bit more than Eastmont. Could be. So we'll see if that comes they, to fruition. Well, yeah, they've got a left-handed quarterback, pretty good kid, big pretty kid. good size yeah. kid in the backfield, and watch for number 30. He's their Woo. tight end, and he is one to watch. He's Kyle a Hendrick, big, I think big is. unit out there for Efreda. It's the Tigers and the Wildcats still to come here on the pregame show. We're going to talk with uh, head coach uh, Michael Don. We'll also visit with one of the seniors that was introduced just a moment ago, Del and Esparza, it's all right here as we get ready for football on a Friday on the NCW Life Channel. Are you ready for some football? We'll be right back. Make being home fun again. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa has just what you need to bring fun back into your backyard. We have a wide selection of artesian spas and swim spas, new and used to choose from. We are happy to announce we are now selling Rainbow Kids Play Structures with 50 models to choose from. To help finish off your entertainment area, we have patio furniture and Komodo Joe grills. At Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, we have just what you need to bring family fun and entertainment to your backyard. Stop by today. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dick's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. Pre-game show continues here on the NCW Live Channel uh, Senior Day. It seems weird. We're only four weeks into a season, Coach. Uh, Michael Don joining us now on the pre-game show. But you got to say goodbye to the seniors already. Yeah, it's kind of weird. This is only their second home game of the year. Um, they only get two, and it, it came quick. And it's like, here we go, <laughs> you know. What do you learn from – do you learn more from a 10-7 game or a 35-point, 13 game you had last week? Uh, I think you learn a lot from both. I mean, you just watch the film and you see what you got to get better at and what we're doing well and not well. And um, obviously, I think we're getting a little bit better every week. And uh, we just got to keep getting kids growing. And it, it kind of feels like, you know, at this point, we're just finishing summer camp, mm -hmm. kind of that feeling of sure. where we're at. Um, but, uh, you know, we just keep getting better every week. And 
hopefully this week we get better again. Talk about this freshman you got there, uh, yeah, quarterback and, and moving Ivan around and, and getting his talents in the running back position. How's that coming for you? Oh, it's going really well. Um, you know, Luke was, uh, we saw a pretty talented kid last fall when we had him out throwing the ball a little bit and uh, when we first got cleared to do some small stuff in pods and um, we thought he would be our backup quarterback and then as we got going and you know things happen and you know we were looking at our running back depth and we liked what Ivan brought to the table and we decided to move Ivan to fullback and just let Luke take the reins and um, it's worked out really well Ivan's doing a great job at fullback and he's helped us not get as young I mean we had a we got a freshman running back playing and um, freshman quarterback and it's just kind of you know it's good to have some of those juniors and seniors in there sometimes and he's been a, a nice breath of fresh air as a junior to help us out well uh, that does uh, you know bode well for the future I mean you're getting that experience now how do you pay respect to these seniors that this year for them has just been all screwy and yet you honor them here on a Friday night uh, I think we just come out and compete and get them all out there and hopefully uh, they all get an opportunity to play um, you know, we've had some a lot of guys that have been with us for four years, and um, it's been kind of a weird year. And some of them never thought this would happen. Uh, I've talked to quite a few of them where they said that at some point during the pandemic, they had come to the conclusion that this just wasn't going to happen for them. Um, and that's the group it was the hardest on. Is it's as a senior, you know, you know, football's over after high school, and you're going, how, how do you stay motivated for something you're not sure is going to happen? Um, it's really easy for a guy like Max Prazier, uh, who's going to go on and play college football. Um, it's easy for the juniors and sophomores because they have more years to come. Uh, it, it took a lot to, for those guys to stay motivated and keep working and um, not fall into the trap of, well, is this even going to happen? And um, them getting this opportunity is huge, and I think we're all excited to come out and play one last home game. Let's talk about this Vreda team. they got a pretty uh, big-sized kid at quarterback, left-handed slinger. Uh, got a couple of guys that rotated running back. Number 30, their tight end, is a pretty big target downfield, too. Yeah, no, they got some good-looking kids. Uh, looking at their roster, they got a lot of height. they got a lot of tall kids. Um, you know, they've, they've had a tough schedule so far, and, um, you know, we just got to come out and compete and be physical up front and hope I think that's where we hold the advantage right now is up front against them um, but they've got some talented skill kids they've got a wide receiver DB who's going to go play NAI football at Montana Western and um, they always seem to have a few kids that can play at the next level and they've got some decent athletes and we have to get on top of them early and uh, you know yeah you, you talked about the line play and and watching their film the one thing I do see is they have some problems sometimes with with a lot of leakage on the offensive line. Yeah, you know, they've played a few three, four teams. Everybody's been an odd front against them so far. And um, that can be a bear for high school kids, a lot of moving and movement. And, um, you know, they've had some trouble with those movements. And hopefully, you know, we can create some of that same so same opportunities and um, make them think a little bit and get some free runners. But, uh, you know, I think we're pretty physical up front. And I think it'll be a good good opportunity for us. Well, best of luck here tonight. Keep everybody healthy. Most importantly, have some fun. Thank you very much. All right, Michael Don joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back and talk to one of his seniors coming up next here as the pregame show continues on the NCW Life Channel. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Shalane Douglas Casa is dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in our community-wide pinwheel project and help keep kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. Save Mart is the place to go if you are in the market for home furnishings. They have rows and rows of sofas, love seats, recliners and chairs in a vast array of fabrics and colors. Name brands include Ashley, Best, and Stanton. With pictures, lamps, and tables to complement your new furniture, Save Mart is a one-stop shop. Save Mart offers 12-month special financing on approval of credit. Save Mart also offers free delivery, setup, and haul away in their service area. Serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 50 years. Located on North Wenatchee Avenue or visit online at SaveMart.net.
Pre-game show continues here on the NCW Life Channel. We get ready for Eastmont and Efreda. Now talking with Dylan Esparza, wide receiver for the Eastmont Wildcats. I know you get in there on defense occasionally. What's your favorite position? Um, I I prefer wide receiver. I've played it since a junior. So I, I'll, I played freshman and JV, and then as a junior, I came up to varsity and played wide receiver. And now this year, I'm wide receiver too, and I like it. A lot. What is your job? I mean, you guys run the ball a yes. lot. Uh, you don't throw it very much, but you have a job on every play, right? Yeah. So, um, honestly, I mean, we've had a running back get chased down backside from a corner. So, honestly, like when we're running outside, we're doing all these outside plays when they pitch the ball out. Like we have to pin the corner in and that's how they get outside. And honestly, we're kind of the touchdown block and we're pretty important in that. Absolutely. So. Absolutely, and, and a lot of people don't realize that. We try to point that out, that yeah. it takes all 11 guys to make a play happen, exactly. especially those long plays. You guys got to be blocking downfield. Yeah, we do, and honestly, it sets up our pass game a lot too because, I mean, if we're running the ball and they're starting to cheat up, we can hit them with a the deep ball. Talk about this this change for you guys at quarterback. You went from you know a, a senior experienced guy to a really young freshman. Talk about how that has been for you guys. Um, I mean, we've been working in the offseason with Luke and Ivan for all summer long during COVID and stuff. So we've been out here playing sevens and doing all this stuff. So honestly, I'm really comfortable with both of these quarterbacks. So weird season, obviously. Yeah. I mean, here you're almost done already yeah. before. I mean, it just feels like it just got games. started. How hard is that for you? Um, honestly, it's it's really hard. Like, I wish I had that full season, the full summer to connect with guys like I know I'm a captain and stuff, but I, I honestly don't know how far JV because we're not, we weren't lifting over the summer altogether. We weren't out here practicing together. So it's actually really tough on me. And I feel for all the seniors too, because it, like it's that bond that we try to um, create throughout the summer and stuff. And it's just not there with the younger kids. See, and us adults, we go, well, at least they're playing. But I mean, there's more to it, isn't there? Th there's a lot more to it. I mean, exactly like over the summer, that's where I feel like that's where most of my memories came from football and not not during the season at all. I mean, that's when we just play and work on ourselves kind of. But when we're in the summer lifting and practicing, that's when we really connect with each other. So Royal really took it to you guys the opening week, but they've been taking it to everybody. Yeah. I mean, you look at what happened with Wenatchee here last week. So you guys get a win over Wenatchee. You get a bigger win last week. Are you feeling like things are, are coming along for you guys? Yeah, we uh I mean, Royal was just so much more fundamentally sound against us, and they were just on point on every single play. And we, after that game, we said we're going to really fix our tempo during practices, and we've done very well with it. I mean, we're making fewer mistakes each week. Like, I think we're doing really good on prepping with teams and having our tempo during practices and stuff. So what's your plans after high school? What do you hope to do? Um, I'm going to go to Central, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, major in um, business and minor in accounting. When you have free time, which we've all had a lot of free time yeah. here, especially you guys. So what, what do you like to do? Um, I mean, I like I like coming out here and playing football seven <laughs> on seven. I play pickup games at, over at the courts over there. I, I do, a, I like to try to stay active a lot. And we're gonna see you be on football and other sports, right? Uh, this yeah, year? yeah, this year I'll be playing baseball and I'll play basketball at the end of the year. Okay, yeah, yeah weird too. Season yeah. two is yeah. spring, yeah. season three is winter. Well, it, we'll just figure it out as it goes. <laughs> Dylan, best of luck, keep healthy, and have some fun. Thank you. All right, Dylan Esparza joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back and take a look at today's starting lineups as the Tigers take on the Wildcats. It's Eastmont and Afreda next on the NCW Live Channel. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. Hi, I'm Shauna Larson. I'm the designated broker here at Laura Mounter Real Estate. We are a locally owned firm and we've worked hard to earn our reputation of always doing business the right way. Laura Mounter Real Estate is continually investing in the best technologies and highest quality marketing. For these reasons, our community has voted us the world's best real estate office for the past five years. If you have real estate needs, let a Laura Mounter real estate agent show you the difference.
And there you see the Eastmont Wildcat football team coming through the line of cheerleaders as they enter Wildcat Stadium. And for the first time really this season, fans are in the stands here at Eastmont tonight as they uh, celebrate senior night here as the Tigers come to town from Efreda. Both teams at 2-1 and one on the season. And our broadcast uh, continues here with the toss of the coin. We've got the National Anthem coming up along with Grant Olson, Eric Granstrom with you here on the NCW Life Channel and we'll get those starting lineups as well. I think first though they're going to do the anthem here and so while they do that we will take a break. You know what? Let's not take a break. I think the band is going to play the anthem so why don't we go ahead and listen in to the band. Hopefully we can pick them up with our crowd microphone here at uh, Wildcat Stadium. You see a few folks that are still filtering into the stands here. It's a gusty night tonight. We didn't expect this wind there, weatherman. <laughs> I knew it was going to come up eventually. <laughs> it is kind of surprising, though. The sun, that wasn't a surprise. We did get up to 61 degrees oh, today. Beautiful. But, boy, I'll tell you, the temperature with the uh, sun going down oh is going to dip. So I'm hoping that we get one of those winds that lies down after the sun sets. Right. But we'll see about that. Eastmont lining up here near side on the uh, side sidelines here at Wildcat Stadium and then a Freda across the way in their white uniforms trimmed in black and orange. She spawned with the home red with the white numbers and a hint of that Columbia blue, especially on the Wildcat that's on the helmet as the band, I believe, will play our national rise, anthem. And face our flag and gentlemen, remove your hats as the Eastmont Wildcat Band, under the direction of Maggie Whiteman, plays for us our national anthem. <laughs> Nothing like an anthem on a Friday night to get you ready for some football. Absolutely. Grant. And the band. I love to hear yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, the captains will be approaching uh, center of the field here momentarily. The captains tonight for Eastmont are Max Prazer, Dylan Esparza, and Jack Goodmanson, all seniors on senior night here at Eastmont High School. I asked uh, Jay Mills, the head coach for Efreda, I said, okay, coach, I need to know who your uh, captains are. He says, let's keep it simple. Number 30. <laughs> That's Kyle Hendrick, the 6'4", 225-pound senior. And that one man can make a difference in a game tonight. And he's also going to be a defensive lineman here tonight, too. I think he's going to be a force in this game. Just watching him walk around this field, this oh, kid is a specimen out there. Absolutely. So the captains approach center of the field here. And uh, our officials for tonight, the referee is Mike Penning. He's out there in the white hat. He will handle the coin toss duties. The umpire is Terry Alton. The head linesman, Kelly Campbell. Line judge is Kirk Lyons and the back judge is Robert Tidd as the captains will meet and out there uh, the man who joined us on our pregame show here on the NCW Life Channel uh, Dylan Esparza in the number five uniform and as we mentioned number 30 Kyle Hendrick for Efreda. I heard him call him Baby D Baby during D. the senior uh, yeah <laughs> the introductions the introductions that's pretty cool <laughs> Well, you can see the size right there of yes. Hendrick out there. He big is kid. a big hombre. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Eric, I think we're going to see a lot of ground game here tonight, especially on the part of, of Eastmont. Only one running back, though, in the lineup, really, for afraid about a ton of wide receivers, which makes you yes. think they're going to put the ball in the air, but you never know. But I think we're going to see a lot of ground game from, from Eastmont. Looks like Efreda won the toss, elected to defer, so... 
The uh, official will line him up here. Looks like Efreda will uh, take the ball. No, it will be Efreda taking the ball first. And uh, they'll head into this very stiff breeze here tonight. So, Grant, let's take a look at the lineups here. Offensively, who do we have for the Afraid of Tigers? For the Afraid of Tigers starting tonight, that quarterback is Gavin Burns. He's a senior tall kid, 6'3", 185. Behind him, Conrad Zimer, 5'9", 170-pound senior. Wide receiver is Tony O'Neill, also a senior. They're all seniors, so I'm just going to stop <laughs> that right there. Wide receiver is J.T. Froes, 5'10", 175-pound. The other wide receiver, Tyle Libert, uh, li maybe Libert, L-Y-B-B-E-R-T, 6'1", 180 pounds. Tight end, we just mentioned a big kid, the captain tonight, Kyle Hendricks, 6'4", 225. And now the line, the center is Nicholas Johnson. Uh, right guard, Selvi Amaya. Also at guard is Zachary Reyes. The two tackles, Vincent Vargas and Caleb McMullen. Pretty big offensive line. A couple of 220s, yeah. 230. Yeah. There, there is a sophomore in there, Grant, the left guard. Oh, Zachary Reyes is a you know sophomore. What? So I guess that just throws what we said out the window <laughs> earlier. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime warranty at Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln. Customer satisfaction is uh, their number one. Stop by today. Also by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. Great service with a personal touch. That's their commitment to you. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa provides a different kind of full service care that gives their clients peace of mind. Visit their their showroom today. We got time. Let's uh, take a look at the defense here for Eastmont. For the starters. For the starters for Eastmont on the off or the defensive line at tackle is Caleb Garcia. He's a junior at 225 pounds. Nose tackle Alex DeFore, 6'4, 275 pounds. At one defensive end is Kellen Leonard. He's only a sophomore, 6'2, 175 pounder. At the other defensive end is Hunter Moore. He's 5'11, 220 pounds. The cornerbacks Chance Garcia, and we're going to be talking about him quite a bit tonight. He's a ball. He's a playmaker out there. 5'7", 175 pounds. The other corner is Tyrell Malcolm. He's a junior at 6'1", 170 pounds. The linebackers and they're good ones. Linebackers Logan Schneider, 5'11", 180 pound junior. The inside linebacker maybe one of the best players on the field tonight is senior Max Prazer 6'2", 210 pounds. And the other linebacker, also really good special teams player is linebacker Nathan Chang of 5'6", 140 pound sophomore. The two safeties are Spencer Heimbinger and Apollo Mora. He's a junior, 5'7, 160 pounds. So there you go, the starting lineups for both the Eastmont and Efreda tonight. As we mentioned, the two teams coming in at two and one on the season for the Tigers. They started the season off on the road at Waluk, picking up a 28 0 win. Then they uh, faced Royal at home, and nobody wants to face Royal home or away this season <laughs> as they fell 52 to nothing. And then last Friday night came up with a narrow win over Chelan, handing the Goats their first loss of the season, 22-20, the final in that one. Eastmont, meanwhile, at 2-1 and one on the season, they started off at Royal, losing 52-10. In fact, they're the only team to score <laughs> on Royal this year. Uh, Wodanchi came into town here. That was the only other home game that Eastmont has had. We call that one here on the NCW Life Channel with the Eastmont coming from behind to win at 10-7. And then they traveled to Moses Lake last week and came away with a 35-30 win against the Chiefs. Again, Grant, short season. Here we are week four, and we really know nothing about either team. You know, that's isn't it the weirdest <laughs> feeling? Usually we were prepared, but tonight right. we just don't know. And I was thinking on my drive to the field here tonight, if you're an afraid of player, what's on your mind? Are you excited to be coming and playing a 4A school? Are you a bit apprehensive? Or what are they thinking? I, I think you got to be excited. I mean, it's like I was talking with Jay Mills, uh, head coach for uh, Afraid of before the game, and he said, we're happy happy to be playing football. That's all there is to it. We're happy to be playing no matter what happens here tonight. Well, I think I would have that attitude, too. And Freight has always had a great sports tradition. Big baseball town, that's for sure. Oh, so yeah. there's a lot of athletes there. I think we're going to have some fun tonight. So kicking off for the Wildcats is Cameron Pope and back deep uh, the Tigers. Let's Looks see. like it's Tony O'Neill, number five. And number 28. Of course, we don't have a 28 on our roster. No, we don't. <laughs> Is it 28 or 26? I think it's 28. Okay. 
All right. That happens with the uh, truncated season that we have as well. Uh, you only have as much information as is provided by the coaching staffs. All right. We are just about set to go here. Football Friday night on the NCW Life Channel. And great to have you along. Here's the kick by Pope. And it's going to come down to O'Neal. O'Neal takes it at the 10, 15 yard line, makes a move, doesn't quite get to the 20 where he's wrestled down at about the 19. I think they are going to give him the 20 yard line. That's, uh, as the officials say, chalk it up. Put it right on a yard marker. That makes it easy to set the chains and everything else to start the game. I like that. Chalk it up. So, afraid it begins at their own 20-yard line. First time we'll see their offense tonight. We mentioned a big quarterback, Gavin Burns, the senior, 6'3", 190 pounds. And he almost looks a little bit bigger than that when you're down on the field. But he is a big kid out there. And we'll see if afraid is going to put the ball in the air tonight. And left-handed. Right. Once again, it's Conrad Zimer behind him, also a senior. Now he moves into the slot area. So there's five receivers now in this offensive set for the Tigers. Burns back to pass quick out in the flat, and he dropped it. It was dropped out there by Tyler Liebert, the wide receiver. Well, one thing to do when it uh, is blowing in your face is go with a quick pass and hit him right in the hands. But I think he was thinking about running it before he was thinking about collecting the ball first. You're right, Eric. And I think they had good coverage. They were just waiting for him on the Wildcat defense. So that'll bring up second down and 10 now. Afraid at their own 20-yard line. They're going to split three receivers out near side once again. And this time, Zimer will stay behind the quarterback, Burns. O'Neal in motion across the line of scrimmage. Pass over the middle, and I'm not sure who was supposed to catch that. It looked like maybe Froweis, Froweis, the uh, wide receiver, but a couple of players in that pattern for the Afraid of Tigers incomplete. Yeah, it was uh, high and behind Froweis. Uh, could have been considered a pass intended for Tyler Libert, but it was kind of ugly no matter what, and incomplete brings up a third down and 10. And usually, Eric, when you have two receivers in the same area like that, somebody did something wrong there. So now it's third and 10, as Eric mentioned. Once again, trips left side. That's the near side with Burns and shotgun. Burns is going to roll to his left this time. Left-handed quarterback. Remember, the receiver gets hit at about the 35-yard line and almost picked off by Apollo Mora, the safety. But there was definitely contact downfield at the 35-yard line, but no call. Pass intended downfield for Tony O'Neill. And as you mentioned, he went flat on his back at about the 40. That pass into the wind, it was wobbly, but still had a lot of strength. It really did. All right, on to punt now for the uh, Tigers is Kyle Hendrick, the big tight end, and back to receive this kick for the Wildcats. Chance Garcia back yep, there. Very dangerous Chance Garcia. Should be a good field position for Eastmont to start the game here. Here's the punt spiral that lands on the other side, the Eastmont side of the 50, and then it's down there. And Eastmont's going to have some great field position on this, their first possession of the ball game. No score, 11.33 left to go here first quarter. 33-yard punt, no return. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Shalane Douglas Casa, court-appointed special advocates for children. Moran, give you a chance to set up the offense here for Eastmont. Well, the Eastmont Wildcats come out. Of course, freshman Luke Gale, Corbin Keyes is the running back behind him tonight. Ivan Corona, we're going to call his name a lot as well. Also, Gunnar Peterson, anxious to see him, only a freshman, and we'll get you the rest of them here. Threats of the starters here in a second. Gale under center. Here's the sandoff to Peterson, the freshman, and he does get over the 50. That's about a five-yard gain all the way to the afraid of 48-yard line. Well, that's the way to start things off as a freshman to get that handoff right up the middle, get behind that big offensive line, gain uh, five yards on first down. Gunnar Peterson, I mean, not bad size for a freshman, 5'9", 155 pounds, but I think he's got some speed, and I can't wait to see a little bit of that because they're going to miss some speed that they're not going to have roughing in the lineup tonight. So. Absolutely. And uh, can you imagine this freshman? I mean, here it's senior night. you got a crowd in the stands for the first time and here you are running the football for your varsity football team at a school you don't even attend in person it's got to be I know he goes to Eastmont Junior High School second down at five Wildcats there's the handoff once again it's Peterson but he's stuffed this time after a short gain nice defensive play uh, for the Tigers that time the linebacker uh, Tyler Liberty in that stop and also number 32 as Winston Roberts a sophomore 
Third down, short, Third about down, three to go three. for yeah. Eastmont. Ball is on the Afreda side of the uh, field well, at the 46-yard line. All freshmen, the freshman quarterback handing to the freshman in the backfield, seven yards on two plays. Say the future looks bright for the Wildcats. Yeah, no kidding. In motion for the Wildcats is Corbin Keys. He comes back now into the backfield. <laughs> it's like, no, just a little jog didn't out Didn't mean there. to do that. Peterson stands at the 50. He gets the quick handoff, and oh he is my. hit immediately at the 45-yard line. That's the line of scrimmage, and a great play by linebacker Caleb McMullen, the senior, to make that stop. Brings up fourth down. Boy, he sniffed that one out. He came right through like a shot. Uh, I think I was actually uh, Carson Davis, 53, oh, it was that 53. made the uh, tackle there for uh, the Freda Tigers, and Davis just came shooting through. 6'4", 200-pound junior. Going to bring up a punting situation situation here for the Wildcats. Really a form tackle that time. Great job. On to putt for Eastmont. It's Cameron Pope, who also does the kickoff duties. Zemer back to return the punt for Ifreda. Good snap. Here's the punt by Pope. Beautiful oh, high spiral kick. We'll see what kind of bounce it. It's an afraid of bounce. It hit at about the 15. It looks like it's going to bounce back upfield at about the 20 yard line. A beautiful kick right there by Pope. 25 yard punt as it turns out. A great high punt. Unfortunately, it didn't get the bounce he wanted. And so the Tigers will have the ball back. Their second possession of the ball game at their own 20 yard line. Same spot they started from on the first possession. So it's three passes for them, yep. three runs for East. Exactly. It's kind of, I think, how it's going to be here once again. It's Zymer this time with the uh, handoff. He gets hit right at the line of scrimmage, but does manage to get about two yards. Max Prazer in on the stop from his defensive line position. Well, Max Prazer is going to play at the next level, and he shows week in and week out uh, how and why that is because he just uses his frame so well, has such good vision out there, and is able to back it up with his physicality, wraps up the running back with a sure tackle and drops him after a two-yard gain. Got good size, too, about 6'1", 210 pounds, get a little bit bigger at the college level, and he is going to be a player. Second and eight for the Tigers, shotgun. Gavin Burns, the senior, is going to throw it over the middle. Not much there, about two yards, and he's hit immediately. The uh, receiver that time, Tony O'Neill. A good, good stop by the cornerback. I think it was Chance Garcia in on the stop for the Wildcats. Gain of three yards on that pass play. First connection of the ball game. So, Afreda, big third down play. Ball at the, just over the 25-yard line, about the 26. 7.53 left to go first quarter. No score yet here from Wildcat Stadium. Beautiful full moon out there tonight as well. All right, here we go, Gavin Burns shotgun. Looking right side, goes that way. Nice catch made there and almost a first down. Tony O'Neill on a second effort may have an afraid of first down if he didn't step out of bounds. Well, the official on the far side over there saying he stepped out of bounds a yard downfield. So it's gonna be a fourth and about three yards on the little swing pass out to the flat. One thing though that uh, Gavin Burns did was telegraph that all the way. Nice one-handed grab though. You gotta give uh, O'Neill some credit there and then that second effort. On to punt once again, Kyle Hendrick for Efreda. One step and just booms it downfield. The ball lands about the 48-yard line and just dies there like one of Eric Granstrom wedge shots. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Efreda once again is going to get great field position. They began at the 47 on their last possession. And guess what? At the 47 again, Efreda was at the 20 twice. How strange is that? That is pretty strange. 29-yard <laughs> punt, no return for Eastmont on that one. So it's been a case of three and out so far for either team, Grant. We'll see if Eastmont kind of gets that running game going a little bit more. We haven't mentioned Corona yet tonight. Such a tough runner inside. I he expect is. to see him at some point. He's Once your wing back to the right in this set. Under center this time is Luke Gale. Hands it off. There's Peterson, the freshman. Makes a nice move with the 45-40. Turns on the speed to 30. Gets caught from behind as he's dropped at the 27-yard line. 
30-yard run right there for the freshman, and good blocking up front for Eastmont, and very patient for that freshman to wait for that hole to appear. I love that patience. You don't normally see that out of a young player, but you are exactly right. Nice job by Gunnar Peterson. I love the name, too. That's a football name, isn't it, Eric? <laughs> it is. It is. All right, Eastmont. Or someone who's going to host a hunting show someday. Or that. <laughs> First and 10, ball at the uh, freight of 27 yard line. There's Gale, handoff this time, and it goes to Corbin, Corbin Keys. Keys, and nothing doing, and a nice defensive stop. By, I think it was Tony O'Neill yeah, in Tony on that stop. Tony O'Neill got there first. He got some help from Kyle Hendrick, those two linebackers coming in quickly. And boy, that did not work at all for Corbin Keyes or the Eastmont Wildcats as they lose four yards on that first down play. That was a really slow developing play, and it gave Afraid a time to kind of adjust to it and make that stop. So it'll bring up second down and 14 now. Eastmont just sends one receiver out wide this time. Don't think passing's a lot on the Eastmont Wildcats' mind tonight. Well, if it is, here it is. Here it is. Play action to Peterson and a wide open receiver oh. downfield. Just missed Brooks Travato, the junior for Eastmont. The ball just a little bit overthrown and goes incomplete. Beautiful post pattern by Travato. He got inside the uh, defensive backs back there, had the room all around him. But uh, Gale just a little bit too much loft on that. Don't know if he got help from the wind at his back. That'll bring up a third and long for Eastmont. Well, that's something that definitely could take an effect for sure. I see the trees still blowing the flag, so it's not done yet. All right, third down at 14. Eastmont going backwards now. The ball is at the afraid of 31-yard line. Handoff up the middle. Peterson once again, short gain. Don't think he even got back to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about three. Caleb McMullen there first for Efreda, and uh, another big fella up in the middle, 5'10", 190 pound senior, says no, uh, maybe give you a yard or two, but that's about it. Gonna be a fourth down decision time here for Eastmont. You got the wind at the back. They've shown that they've got that long range kicker in Cameron Pope, who won the game for him against Wadanchi earlier this season. What do you think they'll do? Boy, they're just standing there right now. I hate to even, I don't know. I think they, or they might go for it down here too. And if you don't get it, you're still going to pin afraid of back fairly deep. The officials are talking it over here. looks like we have a flag down. I, I totally I missed the that. flag. It's a dead ball foul, personal foul. And that's going to give wow. Eastmont a first down. How about that? So much for decision-making time. Didn't see that whatsoever. It could have been after the play and we were just didn't see it, but that's gonna give Eastmont some great field position now all the way down to the Afreda 13 yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. First time in the red zone tonight for the Eastmont Wildcats. They send once again, Brooks Travato split out wide to the far side of the field. Peterson once again, the running back behind quarterback Gale. Hand off this time, it's Corona. Nobody even touches him and he runs it in from 13. Well, they hadn't gone to Corona yet this game until just then. He was lined up as a wing back to the left, came back right and great blocking up front. And all he had to do was turn the corner and he had an open avenue into the end zone for the first score of the night. That's a great fake, too. And then really the uh, freshman quarterback, Luke Gale, sold that. And so did Corona. He acted like he didn't have the ball, and then he did. An easy 13-yard run. That's one thing about these multiple back offenses like this with the option is that anybody and everybody who's a running back has to pretend like they have the ball, whether they do or not. You got to sell it for sure. Eastmont looks like they might be down a man on this extra point here. And... They're going to maybe have to call a timeout. It looked like Jonathan Corona was supposed to be in there, and <laughs> Coach Michael Don not happy about uh, the lapse of concentration there on this extra point. Well, Eric, just go back a couple of weeks. Uh, Eastmont was penalized for that against Wenatchee for only having 10 on the field, remember? Well, it was an illegal substitution. Right. Uh, they tried to get somebody on there late, so it will be a five-yard markoff here against Eastmont. Oscar Mago yep. on for the uh, point after try. 
Hold is down, the kick is up, and the kick is through. 5.46 left to go first quarter. Eastmont strikes first. It's the Wildcats seven and the Tigers nothing. We're back here in 30 seconds. We are back here at Wildcat Stadium where Eastmont now leads it here in the first quarter, seven to nothing on a 13 yard run by senior Ivan Corona. 5.46 left first quarter. Corona's actually a junior. Oh, he's only junior. Yeah, he oh, his senior. Junior. His brother's a senior that's on the right. ice center. Right. That's right. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Enjoy your day at Highlander Golf Course. Reserve your next tea time or plan a party in one of their simulator rooms. You don't have to be a member to dine in style. Give them a call today. Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Also by Doghouse Motorsports, now featuring the full line of on- and off-road Husqvarna motorcycles. Cameron Pope to kick off for the Wildcats. Back deep, Tony O'Neill for Afreda as well as Conrad Zemer. Here's the kick by Pope, a good one, deep. Sends Zemer all the way back to the end zone. He picks it up at the goal line, the 10 yard line, makes a move with the 12 and then a nice tackle downfield. Max Prazer, he's not only a starter on defense, he's on the special teams unit as well. Makes the coverage tackle at uh, the 11 yard line. I think Zemer's getting a little word from his coach on the sideline that, hey, son, let that go in the end zone. Right, also in on that play, as he always is, Nathan Chang downfield very quickly for Eastmont. Kind of the uh, special teams specialist for Eastmont. All right, third drive of this first quarter for Afreda with 540 left in the period. Down seven to nothing now. Ball is at their own 11 yard line. Burns in shotgun this time. Hands it off to Zemer. Oh Boy, hit immediately. Nice play, Caleb Garcia. The junior tackle for Eastmont in there. Basically untouched and makes that stop. Also a little help from a linebacker in there too, Eric. Good defense. Little delay handoff there, and the guard pulled right in front of Garcia, and that uh, he just followed the hole where the guard left, and he was able to get in there and make the tackle for a loss on the play. Loss of two yards. Second down and 12 for the Tigers. Can't really seem to get anything going yet on offense. Only four yards total in three possessions for the Afraid of Tigers. Here's Burns once again shotgun quick pass. It's Hendrick who drops it at about the 12 yard line. It goes incomplete. Well, they had Prazier breathing down his neck. Chang was there as well. They weren't going to get much after the catch there unless he's able to shake those tackles. He probably heard those footsteps and it just dropped the ball. Boy, big Alex DeFore. He's a tough force to stop in there, too. And a lot of times it looks like these Eastmont linemen just aren't touched at all as they make their way across that line. Of I saw that on film, Grant. Uh, Efreda certainly has had some issues blocking up front this season. Third and 12 now for the Tigers. Burns back to pass, gonna pack quickly, and he got drilled by the linebacker for Eastmont, and that's number 50. Uh, Hunter Moore with a big shot on that quarterback. It goes incomplete, and the punting unit on once again for Afreda. Boy, if I'm a quarterback for Eastmont, too, I'm looking at the eyes of that quarterback. He is staring down his attentive receiver from when he gets the snap. You know, you're we right about that. could get a pick six sometime here tonight. That's a great point. It's Hendrick will stay out there to punt. Good pressure by Eastmont again, and that forced Hendrick, I think, to hurry it up a little, and a great Eastmont bounce as it comes back upfield for the Wildcats, and it's down at the 29 of Afreda. Wow, 20-yard punt. So not only has Afreda had their issues offensively, they've gone backwards with three punts so far, 33, 29, and now 20. Eastmont in golden position at the 29 of the Tigers. And I think the win may have played a little bit of part in that punt as 
well as the pressure. All was a recipe for kind of a disaster for Freda. Boy, Eastmont again slow to get uh, somebody out there on the offensive side. Tony Ortega slow to get out there for the Wildcats. And Coach Don, he's letting his assistants know about it too. First and ten, Wildcats. But the snap is bobbled, and that ball is still loose, still on the field, and it looks like Afreda does recover it at about the 30-yard line. That was a bad handle of that snap to begin with, and then the ball just kind of rolled around on that field, and Afreda comes up with it. First turnover of the ball game. Well, Keyes has touched the ball twice here in this game, and uh, that one for a fumble. Of course, I don't think that uh, Luke Gale ever really got the handle on it, and I think that was all created by the situation with the lineman uh, a little slow to get on the field. Kind of throws the rhythm off a little bit. Yeah. So first turnover, let's see if Efreda can get something going offensively here. Boy, they sure have it thus far in this one. Like I said, four yards total, and they've run nine plays. Fourth possession of this first quarter for the Tigers. 439 left to go, first period. Handoff is Zemer. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but just barely. Nice play by Logan Schneider from his linebacker position and Hunter Moore to make that stop. Uh, Hunter Moore was the first to get there. He was able to smell that one out nicely. Uh, even just on these dive plays, it seems like it takes a long time for the play to develop for uh, Efreda. Nothing gaining for uh, Zemer. He's got three carries, zero yards so far in the game. And as this first quarter is going on, Eric, it looks like Eastmont's defense is gaining more confidence with each possession here too. Second and ten, Tigers. Three receivers split out far side of the field. Burns is looking that way. Goes right side oh. and boy that was almost picked off. It was complete and a nice throw but only a gain of about two to the far side of the field. They're going to be nice and give him three on that pass completion. His third completion of the game. He's three of eight for seven yards. Froes is the uh, receiver on that particular pass. Hendricks also really close to that same vicinity, but boy, you're sure right. Burns does look where he's going. That's for sure. He looked all the way that time, that side too, but all the receivers were there as well. This time they split it up a little bit, send two to the weak side of the field, two here to the near side. Third down and seven. Burns immediately out in the flat oh once boy. again here in footsteps. And that ball almost was a lateral. Now we're going to get a flag down at the end of the play. We had away from it in the defensive backfield two players that were coming together and a little extracurricular. This flag could be against Eastmont. Hmm. And You're right, is. Eric. And that's so, going to give Afraid an automatic first down. Incomplete on the pass play, but just like we saw with Afraid, had a stop of Eastmont on a fourth and long, but then 15 yard penalty. They give him a first down. Now the other shoe, the shoe's on the other foot as Eastmont gets a stop, but a free first down on the penalty. And can Afraid take advantage of it now? Down seven to nothing here. 312 left in the first quarter. That's the biggest gain of the ball game for Afraid right there, that 15 yards. And they have been struggling on offense. Burn shotgun. Back to pass, big drop this time. A screen pass is set up. Another flag comes in right as the catch is made. I think that came from the umpire. I believe they had uh, illegal uh, man downfield. The line on that screen pass got way downfield and the ball was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. So that's gonna be coming against the offense. That'll wipe away that gain of two yards. Travis Hendrick making the reception for Afreda, but as Eric mentioned, not gonna matter. So Freight is going to face a first and long now. Five-yard penalty against DeFredo. It'll be their second penalty of the ball game for 20 yards. Our broadcast brought to you by Sankster Motors. The American Challenge is on at Sankster Motors, home of the all-new Yukon SUV. Also by Wenatchee Power Sports, now featuring Polaris, Yamaha, KTM, and Beta. Sales, parts, and service at Wenatchee Power Sports. First down at 15, Tigers now. Ball at their own 43-yard line. Make a play! 
Zemer back in there at running back, stands next to Burns. Burns going to roll a little bit to his left. Has a receiver there. It's a nice catch, too, by Tony O'Neill, and a nice gain as he is wrestled out of bounds at the Eastmont 35-yard line. Could have been considered a pick play on the Eastmont side oh, over oh, here oh, because oh, the wide oh, receiver, oh, Tyler yeah. Libert, came that's in, that's and that good. gathered up two defenders over there, and that allowed O'Neill to go out, collect the ball, and collect the big yard gain all the way to the Eastmont 35-yard line. Best play of the night by far for the Tigers of 23 yards. Yep. First down at 10 now in Eastmont territory also for the first time tonight. Here at the end of this first quarter, just over two minutes left. Three receivers once again far side of the field for the Tigers. That big tight end Hendrick is uh, at the, on the line. Here's the handoff and a nice play from behind. Once again, Max Prazer with the tackle uh, for the Eastmont Wildcats. Tyler Li Liebert, is it Liebert? Libert, Libert, yep. on the carry. Actually, it was Zimmer on the oh, carry was there, Grant. Yeah, 26. Two. Hard to see some of those uh, numbers sometimes, uh, but a gain of two yards. Looked to me Especially like he had a old, chance. Eric. He looked like he had a chance to gain a lot more than that, but Max Prazer just chasing him down from behind. Great play. Showed you the speed of Prazer, too. Not just size, but also very quick out there. Second down at eight for Efreda. Once again, three receivers to the left side, two to the right. Burns back to pass. Good protection this time. Floats one up along the sideline, and that could have been picked off. It's knocked down incomplete. And a nice defensive play by Spencer Heimbinger for the Eastmont Wildcats. Looking up the uh, Efreda sideline for Carson Burns, 6'4", 170-pound junior, was uh, open for a moment, but again, telegraphing that pass and giving the defender a chance to close. And I just sense a, a pick sometime in this game for Eastmont. The boy just getting seems like it's closer and closer all the time. Brings up a big third down now for the Tigers. Third and eight. Ball at their own 33 with a minute 18 left in the first quarter. Burns rolls this time. I think he might keep it. Got all kinds of field to run. He's going to whip it downfield instead. In the end zone. And there's your pick, Eric. Right in the end zone. And it is a touchback and a pick for the Eastmont Wildcats. Apollo Mora just playing center field back there for the Wildcats, came up with the interception. He had a receiver open for a moment looking for Tony O'Neill, but the ball kind of fluttered into the air and was picked off nicely by Mora in the end zone. You got to wonder, you'd look at film after this, Grant. Uh, quarterback maybe should have kept that football. He had at least 20 yards of open field there, decided to throw it instead. But like you said, Eric, he saw his receiver open for a second and then just got it to him late. So Eastmont with their fourth possession now of the first quarter with a minute 10 left in the period. Second turnover of the game, one per side here, so that equals it out. I was going to say, boy, Coach Michael Don just has not been happy on the sideline. If your hands are cold, just put anywhere near his head. You'll warm up quickly. <laughs> oh, and a oh. bad pitch that time is... Corona had to run it down, and that's going to oh be a God. big loss. Not a good uh, pitch and catch that time by Gale as he pitched it over the head of Corona. Loss of, what, 13 yards on that play all the way back to the seven-yard line. Holy cow, yeah, not, not a good way to start. a crisp night for Eastmont here on several points of the football. One as confident as the Eastmont defense seems to be. The offense, not that confident yet in this game. Even though they lead it 7-0, as our time winding down well, here in Corona's the first quarter. first carry was a 13-yard touchdown. That play wiped out his 13 right. yards. Second and 23. Handoff keys again, and he gets whipped out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. And we're going to get a flag on a late hit on Jack Goodmanson, an unnecessary hit right in front of the Eastmont bench. He was trying to block Jeremiah Barajas and just continue that block after the whistle. You just can't do that. That's going to take it half the distance back and that uh, at the end of the play. With 21.9 seconds left in the first quarter. So it's a dead ball. So it's after the uh, after the play. It's the second personal foul call oh, on the Wildcats. Yeah. Hang on just a sec. The official marked it off from the previous spot, but it was uh, the uh, referee said it was a dead ball foul after the play was over. So it should have been from where the play came to an end, not the previous spot. But the officials are going to talk it over here. I think the far side. Uh, They're saying they want to decline it here, Eric. 
saw the uh, coach Mills. Oh. Well, he's trying to see exactly what happened there. there. Well, is. it's going to wipe out the run. It'll be a penalty against Eastmont. Half the distance will take it back to the six-yard line. Bring up a third and 25 from the five. Handoff. Here's Keys. Boy, he's got blockers in front of him, too. He's got some speed outside and gets a nice gain before he's knocked out at about the 17-yard line. Well, he got 11 yards back on that play, but again, you keep going backwards. That's not what Coach Don and he wants out of his Wildcat uh, offense, that's for sure. And that does end our first quarter of play, too. And after one here at Wildcat Stadium on the NCW Life Channel, it's Eastmont 7 and Afraid of Nothing. We'll be back here to the field in 60 seconds. Stay with us. If you're like me, you're already dreaming about the summer, enjoying it with friends and family in the backyard. Don't get discouraged with the chilly breeze of spring just yet. There is still work to be done and the warmer temperatures are just around the corner. If you've been thinking about when to get your backyard ready for summer, come on down to Blue Lagoon, now scheduling pool openings. Ask us why we think you should open your pool sooner rather than later. Call today. Scheduling is filling up fast. Sure glad we went to Les Schwab. I'm glad the baby's still happy. Well, I'm just glad that along with tires, Les Schwab also does brakes, alignment, and a bunch of other safety services. I mean, if we had gone to a cheap tire store instead, I'd be a doggone wreck. My thoughts exactly. During the Les Schwab Spring Tire Sale, save up to $200 when you bundle select tires, wheels, and brakes. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. And we're back after a 30-yard punt into the wind. Pretty good punt there by Cameron Pope. No return for the Afraid of Tigers, and they'll have it at midfield. Good field, field position. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by August Edge Real Estate, your personal real estate agency with full service offered at just a 2% listing fee. Grant? All right, first and 10 at midfield for the Afraid of Tigers, down seven to nothing. Haven't had a lot going on on offense, but have had their opportunities now. Well, maybe they can take advantage of uh, Eastmont making mistakes offensively and putting the Tigers in great field position here at midfield. Burns in shotgun. Three receivers once again to his left. He's going to pitch it oh quickly. My. And Hunter Moore is there immediately <laughs> in the backfield. And that's going to be a loss of five back to the 45-yard line. Moore was there. Garcia was there. Prazer was there. It was, hey, let's meet in the backfield. And they're lucky that ball didn't get knocked away from the uh, running back as he got that pitch. Dangerous play. Boy, so far in this game, I hate to say it so early on, but Eastmont's defense dominating this so far. That's five carries for Zemer in the game, minus five yards. Eastmont defensive line, just major penetration every play. Burns shotgun again. Looks left, goes that way, has some blockers, but gets back to the, the line of scrimmage. Nice gain of about seven on that pass play. Tyler Liebert on the, uh, Libert rather, on the reception. On the team tackle for the Wildcats. Matt well, Grayson. and that's going to be, you know, a, a successful play because it's almost a pick play over there. They've got two that's wide right. receivers yeah. that are blocking. One wide receiver who comes inside the block to collect the pass and then just runs downfield. So the Tigers get back to the original line of scrimmage at the 50-yard line. Brings up a third and 10 now for the Tigers. Once again, three receivers in the offensive set. Zemer in the backfield next to Burns. Burns is going to put it up deep down the right sideline. Did have a receiver, and it looks like a flag's going to come out. In fact, we're going to have two flags on this. Tony O'Neill, the attended receiver for the Tigers. And that's too bad for Eastmont. There was no need to interfere on that play. That ball was well thrown over the head of the intended receiver. Unfortunately, Nathan Chang got hung up with the receiver O'Neill, brings him down, and that's going to be an easy flag for the officials to throw. Beautiful throw that time by Burns. Of course, he does have the wind in his back now here, but that was a nice pass. 
So the penalty will be 15 yards against Eastmont. Uh, Grant now early going. That's only the fourth penalty of the game, but already 41 yards wow. in penalties against the Wildcats. And here we are at 10-20 left to go before halftime. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> Eastmont at halftime, they're going to have to repaint the locker room after Michael Dunn peels it <laughs> off with his vocal cords, I think. First down and 10 on that Eastmont penalty. Burns shotgun once again. Gonna hand off, nice hole up the middle this time, and a nice run outside all the way to the 30-yard line. Boy, it looked like he could have got a lot more than that again, about six yards on that carry, but it looked like he could have busted that one. Uh, Eastmont, uh, one thing that you can get uh, caught in, which was the case right there, is if you're continuing to pin your ears back and rush up field, that line is just gonna let you go by, and you're gonna run right by the guy with the football. And that's what happened with that carry by Zemer, exactly what happened. Second down and four now for the Tigers inside the Eastmont 30 yard line at the 29. Zemer stays in the backfield right behind Burns this time as O'Neill comes in motion. Burns back to pass and it's caught on the move. Nice slant that time and that's good for a first down. All the way down to the Eastmont 17 yard line. Nice gain of 12 yards. Pass to Froes. He comes up with the grab. That was not an easy grab because that ball was slung his way by Burns. Comes up with a connection and the first down to the Eastmont 17 yard line. Near the 14-yard line, first and ten. And has got something going here. This is by far, I think, their best possession so far in this game, even though they did have a 23-yard uh, play in the last possession. But what was that last gain? 12 yards. 12 yards, okay. First and 10 now at the Eastmont 17-yard line. Burns and Zemer in the backfield. Burns, the big left-handed quarterback, oh, back yeah. to pass, and he's in trouble, and he is drugged down from behind. Quarterback's asking for a horse collar there. I think he had him by the jersey. Yeah, he did. Caleb Garcia, the junior lineman for Eastmont, and that is a big, big loss. All the way back to the 34-yard line, loss of 17 on that play. Boy, it's uh, kind of like the frog in the well right now. You know, two hops up, three slides. Yes, back. it really is. He's going to bring up second down and 27 now for Afreda. The ball is at the 34-yard line, and Afreda needs to get all the way down to the 13. I'll go down as a sack for the Eastmont defense, first of the night. Burns rolls to his left, the lefty, and he's not going to get away from Hunter Moore, I don't think, and he just throws the ball underhanded. I don't think that's legal, is it, Eric? Well, it depends on if the officials a decide out of it. it was a pass attempt or if it was a fumble forward. It looked like an underhand pass is what it looked like. We just kind of got rid he of can, it. He can do that. He's he's able to do that since he is the quarterback. Now the man, uh, we got a man down slow getting cool. up. Or O'Neal, really. So I think they're going to call this an incomplete pass because it hit the ground. Even if you're underhand, you could chuck the ball forward. Yeah, they're going to say it's an incomplete okay. pass. Good call by the officials. Again, our crew tonight, Mike Penning is the referee, Terry Alton the umpire, Kelly Campbell the headlines, Kirk Lyons the line judge, and Robert Tidd is the back judge. It's going to bring up third down and 27 now for the Tigers after that incompletion. Balls. Burns, by the way, 6 of 15 in the game for 46 yards. Boy, it doesn't seem like he's thrown 15 passes here, but I guess he has, hasn't he? It's been a lot of Chuck in the ball game so far. So third and long for the Tigers, just when they had something going here. And Eastmont, I think, might call a timeout here. They were a little bit uh, befuddled uh, defensively. Oh, Tigers going to call a timeout. We'll take a quick one, too. 8.03 left to go, second quarter, Eastmont 7. Afraid of nothing, we're back here in 30 seconds. Take on the new year in a new Ford from Pat Armstrong Ford. From premium grade muscle to unparalleled performance, take on any payload. The all new 2021 Ford F-150 at Pat Armstrong Ford. Take on any adventure. Take on every thrill. The all new 2021 Bronco Sport and 2021 Mustang Mach-E. Built to take on every resolution at Pat Armstrong Ford. We are community strong in East Wenatchee.
down and 27 for Afreda. The ball is at the Eastmont 34-yard line. Burns, the quarterback, in shotgun, fades back. Little screen set up, and it's picked off by Prazer. The 40, 50, got some speed and a blocker in front of him. Prazer still on his feet, spins away from a tackle, and he is going to take it all the way. 66 yards for the touchdown. Max Prazer again, the hero of the night for Eastmont. He's been living in the backfield of the Tigers throughout this first half and now puts himself in a position on a screen pass attempt. He read it all the way, picked it off, and returned it 66 yards for the touchdown for the Wildcats. What an athletic play by the senior inside linebacker Prazer. He saw it happening all the way. It was a screen pass trying to be set up by Afreda, and he read it and took it to the the house for 66 yards. I thought it was pretty well set up there, but Max Prazer said, nope, not quite. Oscar Mago on for the point after try. Good hold after kind of a shaky snap. It's up and it's good. With 7.47 left to go before halftime, it's Eastmont 14 and afraid of nothing. We're back to Wildcat Stadium in 30 seconds. Seven forty-seven left to go before halftime, and this place is lit up now after a Max Brazier 66-yard interception return for a touchdown, and the Wildcats now lead it 14 to nothing. This defense, we mentioned it, Eric, has been has gained more confidence throughout this half, and it just was highlighted right there. Yeah, well, the offense has kind of had its issues here so far in this ball game. I'll tell you, if your defense you continues to play like that, it's going to be a good night for the Wildcats. Already up a couple of scores here on the board. Cameron Pope on to kick off for the Wildcats. Done a nice job tonight, too. Now we'll see how he does into the wind here. Yeah, right. Tony O'Neill. Although the wind has died, I'm looking at the flag, not much happening. Is back deep, also back deep is Zemer. Here's the kick, and Zemer will take it at about the two-yard line. Once again, great kick by Pope. Heads up the middle of the field. Now cuts out to the outside. Uh -oh. Has a little bit of room. And then he's cut down across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. I'm Bigner and Mora help out on that stop, but it looked like he was going to gain the corner there, and he'd still be running towards the end zone right now. I'll tell you what, the junior Spencer Heimbigner has really played a good game tonight. Strong safety out there as he's afraid uh, rather takes over for their second possession of this period. 737 left to go, second quarter. Sixth possession of this ball game. The last two possessions for Afreda, two interceptions. Oh, not what you want to see. Backup quarterback, by the way, is Ethan Black. I don't know if they'll go that route early. It's still early. Gavin Burns out there, and uh, we're going to get a timeout taken by the Tigers. Our broadcast tonight here on the NCW Live Channel brought to you by Jeffers, Danielson, Son, and Aylward Attorneys. Serving in the Wenatchee Valley with the finest professional services since 1946. Also by Laura Mount to real estate rated world's best real estate firm for the Wenatchee Valley in 2020. Hey, don't forget uh, first of three this weekend broadcasts on the NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have uh, high school soccer, girls soccer at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl. I'll be alongside Matt Wisen with a play-by-play -play as the Wenatchee Panthers play host to the Moses Lake Chiefs that uh, kick off at 1, our pregame at 12.50 tomorrow. And
and then we'll uh, head over to the high school for volleyball tomorrow night. It's a rematch of Eastmont and Wenatchee. I'll have your play-by-play uh, -play courtside at Wenatchee High School, 6:20 with a pregame, 6:30 with the uh, first serve in that one. And then uh, next week we've got soccer again on Tuesday with Wenatchee hosting Cashmere. We have volleyball Wednesday with Efreda at Eastmont, and then it is the official bridge of sportsmanship next Friday night over at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl as Eastmont and Wenatchee do battle again. We had a three-point differential in uh, week one. Right. We'll see what we get, or in week two, I guess that was. I guess we'll it see. all depends on the health of J.J. Jelsing, for yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. All right, first down at 10, Efreda. 7.37, left to go second quarter. Ball is at their own 29-yard line. It's Zemer tries that right side and has it been all night long. Nothing doing. Hunter Moore, one of the players in on that stop, as well as Chang. Snyder as well from his safety position. No gain. No gain once again. And we've been corrected, Eric, by our friend Eric Koontz. He yes. reminded us that Eastmont was not the only team to score on Royal. Wenatchee scored a touchdown on Royal. Okay. okay. We can't forget the, the Wenatchee guy, you know, he's yeah, going to correct course. us on of that. Of course. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> for the correction. Second down at 10. Tigers, five receivers in this offensive set. Three to the right of Burns, two to his left. Takes a two-step drop, chucks it over the middle of the field to his big tight end, Hendrick. Incomplete, I guess he oh, dropped he did it. drop it. Yeah, he did. Wouldn't have been much of a gain anyway, maybe one. Well, you got to give that big fella a chance to catch those. He's just slinging that ball, and it's he's only about seven yards from him. <laughs> kind of tough to uh, collect those. You know the quarterback's getting a little bit gun shy when he's in shotgun and takes about a three-step drop from shotgun. You know he's getting rid of the football. That's right. He's getting pressure. Mama. <laughs> Third and 10 now. Clock stopped at 6.50 left to go before halftime. Well, the way Eastmont's been in his lap all night long, I'd be hollering from a mama as I well. I would too. Here's Burns back to pass once again. Going to use that big arm and go down the left side of the field. It's overthrown. But a nice throw. Once again, the intended receiver, Kyle Hendrick, the big tight end. Well, pretty good coverage, uh, uh, both over the top and underneath for Eastmont there. I was worried with a little contact as the ball came flying by that they might drop the flag, but no no uh, pass interference call and a punting situation the fourth of the first half here for the Freddy Tigers. Boy, Gavin Burns showed his arm strength there. That was a nice chuck downfield. Hendrick will stay on to punt. Here's the uh, snap is good. Here's the kick. Good kick once again. It's taken and a fair catch made at the Eastmont 42-yard line by Chance Garcia. 30-yard punt there that time a little bit better. It's interesting how Hendrick uh, doesn't have your typical punter's form when he, uh, he just holds the ball out in front of him and just drops it on his foot. And he's so powerful that he gets 30 <laughs> yards every time he does it. So Eastmont will begin at their own 42-yard line. Eastmont has had some great field position in this game and lead it 14-0. Boy, I think it's imperative that Afreda gets a stop here. Here's the handoff up the middle, and it's Peterson. Gunner Peterson, the freshman, doesn't get much, maybe two yards up to, they're going to give him one only to about the 44-yard line. Nice uh, job at avoiding Dormeyer, who got penetration there in the backfield as he took a little sidestep there, got a couple of yards when it looked like he may lose yardage in the backfield. Paul Pierre for the Wildcats, Gunner Peterson. Second down and seven. Clock rolling at 6.09, left to go second quarter. Eastmont leads at 14-0, this time Gale under center. Going to look downfield, flag comes flying in, and the catch is dropped. The pass is dropped, rather. Nice throw that time, but Brooks Travato dropped it. Might not matter with the flag coming down. Might be a hold, Eric. Receiver for Eastmont, Gale is pointing towards uh, Ifreda, but the official says, no, no, that's on Eastmont. So yet another penalty against the Wildcats going to put them backwards. Nice throw by Gale, the freshman that time, too. Five penalties, 51 yards now here in this uh, first half for the Wildcats. By the way, uh, looking at their total yardage here, uh, they now have more penalties than they do yards. They have 47 yards of offense 
and 51 yards of penalties. Unbelievable. Neither team has many yards offensively. No. 14 nothing, but one of those scores, a defensive touchdown for the Wildcats. Here we go, second down and 17, Eastmont. This time the handoff on the outside. It's Keys, cuts it back up the field, and boy, a saving tackle right there. Boy, if O'Neill doesn't make that stop, Keys is gone for a touchdown. Keys, last week against Moses Lake, had a 65-yard touchdown run for the Wildcats. He almost broke one for the same thing right there. Wildcats have the ball at the 39-yard line. Enemy third down, East one. So third down, 13 for the Wildcats. Short side of the field. Send one receiver out wide. That's Brooks Travato getting a lot of playing time tonight. Yeah, he is. Gale again under center. Corona in motion. It's a misdirection flag comes flying in again and Corona nothing there. I should say keys nothing there. Boy, I'll tell you, Corbin almost lost that handoff. He was juggling it as he got contact at the line of scrimmage. Good job by Freda smelling that one out. As up front defensively, one of the first Tigers to get there was 73 Dennis Hernandez. Second holding call consecutively now against Eastmont. And they're going to decline that, bring up a fourth down yeah. punting situation for the Wildcats. I'll give credit to Efreda's defense. They held serve, and uh, Eastmont just still offensively not doing very well here at all. Just not in rhythm tonight, that's for sure. And they have the bodies up front. There's no doubt about that. Cameron Pope on to punt once again. Zemer back to receive the punt, standing inside his own 25-yard line. Just over five minutes left now before halftime. So afraid of plenty of time to get something rolling here on offense. The punt's a low one. Nice roll for Eastmont, though. Then it's down by Snyder at the 25-yard line. Or is that Heimbinger? Sevens and twos, Eric. They're real tough on those jerseys. <laughs> it was Snyder. 32-yard punt that time around. Punters have done a nice job tonight. Yeah, they have, despite the wind that uh, Breeze picked up again as I was looking uh, for the American flag just prior to that punt. Our broadcast tonight, by the way, brought to you by One Way Construction. One Way is a premier custom home builder and general contractor in North Central Washington. One Way Construction, your project, your way. Sixth possession now of this ball game, or seventh, I should say, for Afreda. Four punts and two interceptions so far in this game. Here's Burns, the lefty goes left side. His receiver catches it. Nice gain of about five yards. I once again think that's O'Neill out there. It is. That's a good uh, pitch and catch over there. Tough throw away from the left-handed quarterback. And O'Neill comes up a little bit shaken on the play. He'll head to the sideline, but a good gain of five yards. Decent coverage over there by uh, Paulo Mora, but not much you can do when that pass was so good. Actually give him six yards on the pass play. Right when O'Neill turned around, that pass was there, just like you're supposed to do it. So a nice throw by Gavin Burns. That brings up a second down and four now for the Tigers. The ball just past their own 30-yard line. Four receptions, 33 yards for Tony O'Neill in the game. Quick pitch this time, and boy, with that penetration, they're just nothing doing there. Caleb Garcia just untouched and makes that stop for a loss of about, what, four yards. Kellen Leonard also getting the start here tonight for Eastmont. The 6'2", 175-pound sophomore wow. is uh, in on that stop as well. Good job defensively for Eastmont, uh, putting the uh, running back back and another backwards play for uh, Efreda, minus six yards. Third and nine now for Efreda. Had a chance here to maybe do something before halftime. But just back to the line of scrimmage and across for a third and nine. Five receivers again in this offensive set for the Tigers. Pass is complete and a nice tackle out in the flat for Eastmont. That pass thrown to uh, Travis Hendrick. Gained about five yards on that, maybe six. That'll bring up a fourth and about three and a half for Afreda. And Kyle Hendrick on to punt for the Tigers. Good quick coverage over there for Eastmont. Good sure tackle on what could have been yardage up the sideline. 
Chance Garcia stands inside his 40-yard line to receive this punt. The punt is away from him, takes a big old bounce. Garcia grabs it at the 25, heads on to the outside, now cuts it back inside, has a couple of blocks and a nice return all the way out to the Eastmont 43-yard line. James Crouchsheed with the tackle for the Tigers and a saving tackle there. Good uh, dancing return for the Wildcats. They'll have it first down at their own 43. Broadcast tonight brought to you by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. Pick up and drop off, drop off available. Stop by their website, globalcarcare.net. I think this is a drive right here, Eric, where Coach Don told his offense, okay, let's get this done right here. 236 before halftime, three touchdown leads. Lead. This is a big drive, and I think Don probably told his team that, that we've been playing flat, and now it's the time to do something. We'll see. Here's the pass on first down, downfield, and a nice play by O'Neal at the very end of that to knock it away. Intended to receiver was Corbin Keyes. You don't see the wing back downfield on a pass pattern too much for Eastmont. He was open, but just a little bit too a bit of a delay getting the ball to him, and that allowed O'Neal to come up and knock the ball away. Good play by the defensive back for the Tigers. Second down and 10 on that incompletion at the 43-yard line. Clock stopped on that incompletion right at two and a half minutes. This time, Gale under center. Keys in motion, handoff up the middle instead. It's the freshman, Gunnar Peterson, and he slides and glides around to about the 45-yard line, gain of two. Good job again defensively there by Caleb McMullen. We've been calling his name uh, quite a bit tonight, the uh, linebacker for Efreda. Shot the gap, wrapped him around the waist and spun him down for a two-yard game. Third and and eight now for the uh, Wildcats, leading at 14 to nothing with two minutes now left to go. Seven carries, 43 yards for Gunnar Peterson in the game so far. Receivers split out far side of the field. Fake handoff, play action going left side of the field, and it's picked off at the 35-yard line. Now the 50, and then gets hit from behind and down at the Eastmont 45-yard line. That ball got caught up in the wind, and he was throwing before the receiver really was ready for it. And an easy interception back there for Bo DeShane. The 6'2", 170-pound junior gets uh, the Tigers the ball back in decent field position here at the Eastmont's 45-yard line. This is really a good opportunity for the Tigers now to take advantage of this. Their fourth possession of this period and great field position at the Eastmont 45. 135 left to go before halftime. Once again, Gale, the quarterback out there, not Gale, Burns rather, the quarterback out there. O'Neal in motion gets the handoff from his slot position and makes a nice gain of about four out of that run right up the middle. I saw that on film quite a bit. They've really used him this season as a uh, man that comes back to the formation, gets that handoff. Kind of a, they'll do a fly sweep, or in that case, he just went right up the gut. Uh, not much happening, but you might see that more as the night progresses. And I think it's obvious too, Eric, that O'Neal, obviously one of the best athletes on this offense, so they're going to get it to him as much yeah. as they possibly can. Here we go. Second and six now. One minute left to go. Second quarter. Burns shotgun. O'Neal in motion. The handoff again to O'Neal. It's a double reverse or a reverse, I should say. And the runner around the left side and then you stood up inside the 40 to the 38. Apollo Mora. And we're going to get a timeout taken here by the Tigers. Uh, Apollo Mora came up and just laid a lick on that running back as uh, Tyler Libert got himself a decent gain on the play. It's going to be the first, I think, third and short if Raiders had all night long. It really is. Third down and three. The ball at the Eastmont 38-yard line with 45 seconds left to go here before halftime. That uh, carry by Libert, his first of the ball game. I'm afraid of here, Eric. I don't think I try it on the ground. They haven't had a whole lot of success doing that. Maybe a quick hitting slant over the middle or even a screen pass, but 
47 seconds left. They still have another timeout. Uh, maybe you just uh, you know, go for that uh, quick crossing pattern or throw out the flat. Right. Try to get the first down and then maybe chuck it towards the end zone. Empty backfield on this third and three. But what do we know? <laughs> right. Five receivers in this set. Burns back to pass under pressure. Goes left side and it's almost picked off. It does hit off the ground. The intended receiver that time, Travis Hendrick. In and out of his hands. Boy, there's been a lot of drops by these Tiger receivers tonight. Heimbigner also slow to get up on the play as he collided with another receiver that was out there in the flat. Had him open. Fourth down coming up. Stops the clock here for Freda. And the Tiger's going to go for it. I don't blame him. I'd go for it here too, I think. 20 pass attempts in this first wow. half wow. for Gavin Burns. He's 8 of 20 for 58 yards. Same formation once again on this fourth and three now. Three receivers right side, two to the left, Burns shotgun. Drops back a couple of steps and then rolls to his left. Looks that way, passes too high for Zemer, the intended receiver, and that ball will get turned over on downs to the Wildcats. Max Prazer with the pressure over on the far side. I think that may have been a run pass option. Prazer didn't give the option to run it, however, and then he tried to fling it downfield. Falls incomplete and they turn it over. So what does Eastmont do here now? 36 seconds left. Ball is at their own 38-yard line. I think they're going to get too fancy here probably before halftime. Well, they just had so many troubles here offensively in this ball game. Maybe you just, you know, hand it off a couple of quick gainers here and then just head into the locker room and talk about what you need to do better in the second half. Looks like that's the plan here is Gale under center on this first and 10. Pitch out to Keys. Does have a couple of blockers. Corona collision there and with O'Neill at the 40 yard line. That was a big boy collision right there and a oh nice gain gosh. of 10 for Keys around that left side. Boy, that, you mentioned it, a collision indeed as O'Neill was the defensive back, the uh, strong safety over on the uh, near side and he came up flying and collides with Corona and uh, Ivan showing his toughness right there. Wow. That was enough for a first down for uh, Keys on that run. So it's first and 10 Eastmont near midfield at their own 49-yard line. 27.9 seconds left to go before halftime. Five carries, 24 yards for Corbin Keys, and they have been difficult 24 yards here in this ballgame so far. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. Les Schwab takes your safety seriously every time you stop by. Also by Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, providing heating and air conditioning service and installation since 1982, serving residential and commercial they specialize in indoor air quality installation or service and repair also by safe mart shop smart shop local serving the wenatchee valley since 1962 and earthwise pet if your pet had a choice they'd choose earthwise now eastmont's thinking may have changed a little bit you think on that 10 yard gain on first down near midfield with just under 28 seconds left to go I'm looking for the flag. It is laying limp on the standard in the north end zone here, past the north end zone. So nothing in your face. Why not? Gale shotgun this time. Three receivers also split out right. One in the slot as Gale rolls to his right under a little bit of pressure. Gets the throw off. Flag comes in. The pass is incomplete to Dylan Esparza. And could and, this be another holding call? It looks like another hold coming He's against Eastmont. Goodness. This will be the sixth penalty if it's, a, if it's accepted against the Wildcats, and it will. With 22 seconds left. Six penalties, 61 yards against Eastmont offensively here in this ballgame. Boy, a lot of times that's a game total for oh, penalties. Yeah. Penalty against the Wildcats. By the way, Eastmont total offense of 71 yards. So they have 61 yards in penalties, 71 yards of offense here on the fish. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have 200 yards of total offense here at halftime. No. Not even close. Just a note to our camera folks uh, and uh, Dan and Josiah in the van, we may have the Eastmont cheer squad doing something here right at halftime. So we'll have to keep an eye on that before we break away for the commercial as we head into half. We'll wait and see about that. 
first and 21 for the Wildcats with 22.8 seconds left. Corona now in at quarterback, and he's just going to run it up the middle of the field. Another flag comes in. Could this be another holding call? Amazing. Sometimes, you know, that could be something that Jay Mills, the head coach for Efreda, saw on film and may have talked to the officials before the ball game. The officials, will they're going to wave that flag off, actually, Grant. 16 yards on that run by Corona. Wildcats have the ball at the 46-yard line. 16 but, seconds left. But that could be something in a little pregame meeting that the, if, that the coach says, hey, you know, watch this. And just look for it, please. Just look for it. And Plant that seed, that, right, Eric? That could certainly be a case here. And a timeout taken on the field. We'll keep it right here. So we're getting close to halftime here on the NCW Live Channel. More broadcasts coming up this weekend. Two tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Wodanchi and Moses Lake Girls Soccer at 1 o'clock. We'll have that live with yours truly and Matt Wisen on the call. And then uh, tomorrow night, Wodanchi and Eastmont Volleyball. I'll be courtside for that one as well, 6.30 game time. Then next week we have uh, Cashmere Wenatchee Girls Soccer from the Apple Bowl on Tuesday night at 7. On Wednesday, it's Eastmont Volleyball wrapping up the season at home against Efreda at 7 o'clock. And then on Friday, the Bridge of Sportsmanship rematch between Wenatchee and Eastmont at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl. Grant and I will have your call there, 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock with the kickoff. Eric Grantstrom, are you busy enough? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I could do more. I could do more. Of course, we sat around for months, didn't we? We did. We, did. we had nothing going on. We had some racing thanks to right. Jeremy Andrews in the Super Bowl. Second and five for Eastmont now. Corona stays in at quarterback, and he's going to wing it down the middle of the field as a receiver right there at the four-yard line. It was Brooks Travato, and that was a throw by Corona. I was out of practice yesterday, and wow. Corona was out just warming up before practice and you know Thursdays are usually just kind of a walkthrough type of practice for a varsity football team and Corona had an amazing arm and I said to coach uh, Michael Don I said Corona's got an arm on him he says yeah he does it's just he's so short it's hard right. for him to see over the offensive line to find guys open point Travato was behind the defense that time too the thing you don't want to happen if you're afraid of his defense at the end of a quarter nice grab on that high snap by Corona Gets away from one tackle, doesn't quite get to the first down yardage, and that'll bring up a fourth down, about a yard short. And that will do it for the end of the first or the first half with our score, Eastmont 14 and Afraid of Nothing. We'll take a two-minute timeout, and we're back at the field right after this. At Earthwise Pet, we take an all-natural approach to wellness and nutrition. Our professional certified groomers were trained by the best in the Pacific Northwest. Our staff here at Earthwise Pet are all certified in pet nutrition. We are here to help you select the perfect food, supplement, and anything else you may need to make sure your pet is living its best and most healthy life. Earthwise Pet, nutrition center and wellness spa. Online or in the store, we are here for you. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dick's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. The world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate, available in the GMC Sierra.
JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. It's halftime here at Wildcat Stadium as Eastmont leads the Afreda Tigers by a score of 14 to nothing. And Eric, it was a game kind of of offenses that really couldn't do anything here in that first half. But uh, Eastmont did take advantage of an interception, a defensive score, had a nice drive on a, a play, a five play drive too, where they scored. But other than that, it's basically been a defensive game and a gain of kind of mistakes for the Eastmont Wildcats too. Uh, absolutely. So I'm sure that uh, the Wildcats are getting an earful in the locker room by Coach Michael Don here at halftime about uh, being a little more crisp in the yeah. second half. I think the Eastmont defense has been dominant out there tonight. Uh, Efreda yes. hasn't been able to get anything going on offense. Uh, five, six punts in that first half, two interceptions, and turned it over on downs was their offensive performance in that first half. So what was our scoring summary in the first half? Though, uh, right? One play, one scoring <laughs> summary. It was a five-play, 53-yard drive by Eastmont on their second possession of the ball game. It only took two minutes, 20 seconds off the clock, point after good, 7 nothing, And then in the second quarter, Max Prazer, a 66-yard interception. That kick also good, and that's where we stand at 14 to nothing. So uh, Afreda actually ran more plays in that first half than in Eastmont. 32 plays and two turnovers. Eastmont, 23 plays and also two turnovers. Not the prettiest of nights offensively for either ball club, and we'll see what kind of adjustments they make at halftime. We'll come back and uh, take a look at our halftime stats, and yeah, they kind of play it out here as well. We do have the Eastmont cheer squad that's heading out to onto the field right now so we will listen in and watch for their performance here at halftime as the Eastmont Wildcats lead the Afraid of Tigers by a score of 14 to nothing. It's the Eastmont Wildcat Cheerleaders. Thank you. 
There you go, the Eastmont uh, Wildcat Cheer Squad entertaining our crowd here at halftime. Yes, we have a crowd here at halftime. And uh, for this final home game of the season, as the Eastmont Wildcats lead it by a score of 14-0, we'll come back with more here at halftime and uh, get you the stats for, for through that first half. And uh, you can imagine it's not the prettiest. We'll tell you about that as we come back here on the NCAW Life Channel. Sabart is the place to go if you are in the market for home furnishings. They have rows and rows of sofas, love seats, recliners, and chairs in a vast array of fabrics and colors. Name brands include Ashley, Best, and Stanton. With pictures, lamps, and tables to complement your new furniture, Sabart is a one-stop shop. Sabart offers 12-month special financing on approval of credit. Sabart also offers free delivery, setup, and haul-away in their service area. Serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 50 years. Located on North Wenatchee Avenue or visit online at Sabart.net building it's in our blood building something out of nothing it takes heart grit and hard work at one-way construction our crew is our family with decades of contracting experience and our in-house design team we bring a unique perspective to building we know that if we work together we are capable of reaching heights that are impossible to reach alone the possibilities are endless Doghouse Motorsports just won Best Motorsports Store for the seventh year in a row. Is it the great facility? Is it the fantastic products? Or is it? I'm Bobby. And I'm Tamer. I'm Mike. And I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Todd. I'm Jeff. And this is the Doghouse Service Team. Hi, I'm Dee. And I'm Dwayne. And I'm Kathy. Come on in and experience the Doghouse. Are you in the Doghouse? By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Shalan Douglas Casa is dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in our community-wide pinwheel project and help keep kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. Grant Olson along with Eric Grandstrom back at Wildcat Stadium where we're at halftime and the Eastmont Wildcats lead the Afraid of Tigers by a score of 14 to nothing. Now with all the first half stats, here's my partner Eric Grandstrom. Boy, not a lot to tell no, you about isn't. here, Grant. Uh, Afraid of with 45 yards of total offense, 11 uh, Rush attempts, we'll say, minus 13 yards. Uh, that says a lot about wow. what Eastmont's defense has been able to do here tonight. Conrad Seamer, eight carries, minus five yards. Tony O'Neill, one carry for four. Gavin Burns was sacked for minus 17. And Libert with a carry for five yards. That's 11 carries and minus 13 on the ground. Meanwhile, through the air, they've tried a lot. Yeah. 21 pass attempts in that first half. And uh, Gavin Burns was 8 of 21 for 58 yards and two interceptions, one of which returned for a touchdown of 66 yards in the first half. So total yards offensively for the Afraid of Tigers, 45 yards. They were penalized, by the way, twice for 20 yards in the first half. Meanwhile, East Ball Wildcats have not really done much better, folks. 86 Six yards of total offense, and most of that, in fact, all of it, has really come on the ground here. Gunnar Peterson, the freshman, seven carries, 43 yards tonight, so not a bad first half for him. Corbin Keyes with five carries for 24 yards. Ivan Corona has four carries for 19 yards. 13 of that is on a uh, his touchdown, the only offensive touchdown of the night for Eastmont. So 16 rushes, 86 yards on the ground. Meanwhile, Luke Gale through the air, 0 for 3, and an interception 
interception. Ivan Corona 0 for 1, so 0 for 4 through the air total and one interception. So 86 yards of uh, everything on the ground here for the Eastmont Wildcats. And this is the one that hurts if you're coach Michael Don and the coaching staff. 61 yards and penalties on six penalties in that first half. That was six accepted penalties. Right, there was a few right. more that could have been accepted as well. So the Nets offense, if you take away the yards and penalties, just 25 yards. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got to correct that. That is for sure. Hey, the Eastmont band is having some fun down on the track. Let's listen in and watch as the uh, band is here tonight for Eastmont High School. like uh, of course the jinx of the announcer we go to him <laughs> and is that going to be I was waiting to see if they were going to maybe play another song here looks like they might so we'll hang on here for just a sec and see if they and that's been the, I mean the tough part I mean for the bands just to practice oh, you know really with the social has. distancing and everything else going on it's, it's so nice been, to hear a band at a high school sporting <laughs> event it, is. it just makes the event it really does it does so let's listen and watch a little more of the East Bond High School Marching Band here at Eastmont High School. go a little bit of the Eastmont uh, band here at halftime and yeah I mean the world is right when you got a band you got cheerleaders you got fans in the stands yeah, just love it you we're can hear not it. back to normal but we're trying to eat <laughs> that right. way second half action coming your way Eastmont on top of a Fred of 14 nothing you're watching football on the NCW Life Channel we'll be right back this time tonight Hi, I'm Shauna Larson. I'm the designated broker here at Laura Mounter Real Estate. We are a locally owned firm and we've worked hard to earn our reputation of always doing business the right way. Laura Mounter Real Estate is continually investing in the best technologies and highest quality marketing. For these reasons, our community has voted us the world's best real estate office for the past five years. If you have real estate needs, let a Laura Mounter real estate agent show you the difference. Highlander Golf Course is proud to announce their two new state-of-the-art full swing golf simulators with over 80 courses of virtual golf to choose from year round. Or try their laser shot simulated firearm program or gaming with football, basketball, and much more. Enjoy Highlander food and drink service from their full service bar and grill in the comfort of their simulator room. Call the Highlander Pro Shop to book your time at 884-4653. That's 884-4653. Wenatchee Power Sports not only has a new owner, but an all new attitude to match. Speaking of attitude, check out the 2021 models arriving now. Polaris snowmobiles, ATVs and side-by-sides. Yamaha motorcycles, watercraft, ATVs and side-by-sides. KTM motorcycles and the latest edition beta high performance motorcycles. Coming this fall, a huge demo event featuring the latest and hottest off-road machines. It's all at the retune Wenatchee Power Sports where maximum performance is a way of life. 3031 GS Center Road in North Wenatchee open Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's automotive alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. We're back at Wildcat Stadium as halftime is just about ready to wind down. Our score is Eastmont 14 and Afraid of Nothing. And Eric, 
If you're the afraid of Tigers, not much on offense. What do you do <sighs> just to try and compete and stay in this game in the second half? Well, their plays seem to take so long to develop, and that just allows Eastmont's defensive front to really cause havoc and create havoc. I think you go with just some really quick hitting stuff and, and give your offensive line a chance to just block a hole, get positive yards, grind it out. I mean, three yards and a cloud of dust. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, we've seen the potential for a passing game, but the way Eastmont's ears are pinned back defensively up front and the way Max Prazer is playing at his linebacker position, uh, if you don't do something other than what they did in that first half, they're just going to continue to feast here in the second half. I totally agree. And if you're Eastmont up 14 nothing, stalled out quite a few times on offense, what do you do to get the offense kind of in gear here in the second half? Well, you see Ivan Corona is out there t uh, talking it over with his coaching staff right now. I just wonder if they're going to pull the uh, freshman out and, and say, you know, this is a continuation of a learning curve for the freshman, but uh, have Ivan Corona run the offense here in the second half and really stay to the ground. Uh, stay to what you know as an offense, and that is rushing the football. And uh, just continue with that and give that big offensive line a chance to wear down the Tigers up front. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Corona would wreak a lot more havoc on this Tiger defense if he was throwing and running the football. He didn't touch it that much in the first half, and he's a very talented offensive player. We could see that at the end of the second half or first half, but I think he's going to touch the ball a lot more here in this second half. Our broadcast tonight here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you by Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime warranty at Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln. Customer service is number one. Stop by today. Well, I can't see the scoreboard from where I am. What do we have? Are we ready for About the second 40 half? seconds to go. All right, well, I think Eastmont gets the ball here as well. They should. Our this kind of gives you an idea, Erica, how this game started. Afraida had the ball first with 11.53. Eastmont's first possession was at 11.33 <laughs> of the first quarter. Yeah, That's kind of how that first half went. Yeah. Uh, again, our offensive output, 86 <coughs> yards total for Eastmont, 45 yards for Afraida. We'll see what kind of adjustments they make here at halftime. It's uh, been a while I, since I've seen that low of totals, too, for yeah. offense in yeah, a half. Absolutely. That's for sure. So the Tigers will kick it off, and uh, Carson Burns, one of the biggest kickers you'll ever see at 6'4", 170, <laughs> will kick it away here for the Tigers. you got to think he's a basketball player as well. Absolutely. Looks like our win came up again at halftime here. I see his jersey fluttering in the breeze here, although I'm looking at uh, our standard here in the north side of things and just a little flutter. I can see some pom-poms blowing across the field by the Afraid of Cheerleaders, too. Sure you would be looking over there. Well, I just, you know, you notice the fluttering <laughs> of the, yeah. Oh, the ball blew off the tee, so it that's your indication right there. So back deep for the... Uh, Wildcats, Chance Garcia, I believe, is one of the players back there for Eastmont. And it is hard to see those jerseys. Here's the kick, left-footed kick, short this time. It drops at about the 20. That ball was touched by Eastmont. They got a fall on it, and they did. Touching it was Sammy uh, Garcia. Uh, looked like uh, Corbin Keyes was able to cover the football, and uh, they won't chalk it up this time, Grant, or will they? You got a right foot at the 30, and it looks like they're going to chalk it up. I've <laughs> seen a lot of that tonight. We had yeah. a lot of 25s, 40s, 30s. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> First Officials like to use those uh, big white lines out there. Right. I don't makes blame them. Easier. All right, it will be. The freshman, uh, Luke Gale, back out at quarterback here to begin this third quarter for Eastmont. First down at 10 at their own 30-yard line. Keys in motion. Handoff Peterson up the middle. Big hole, too, across the 35 up to about the 38-yard line. That'll be a nice gain of eight yards on first down for the freshman, Gunnar Peterson. Boy, this kid's going to be good. Only a freshman for okay, Eastmont. Yeah, he had, uh, let's see, uh, 43 yards at halftime, 51 yards now on eight carries in the game. And, hey, if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I like his the way he runs. No apprehension when he gets to the line of scrimmage. He just runs hard. Second and two now, Eastmont. Handoff this time. Keys around the right side. Has a couple blockers in front of him, but a nice play by the defense. will get him out of bounds at the 41 or 42-yard line, and that'll be enough for an Eastmont first down. 
Again, Tony O'Neill, all world here for the Afraid of Tigers, knocks him out of bounds after a four yard gain. But again, as you mentioned, Grant, first down for the Wildcats. Well, you said it too, Eric. O'Neill is just all over the field tonight. He's a free safety, but he makes just about all the stops. As Eastmont now comes to the line, first down and 10. Boy, would they love a big, long scoring drive here to begin this half. This time, Gale under center. Keys in motion. The handoff up the middle. A stutter step by Peterson. Then he's away at the 50 spin move, and that'll get him all the way down to the afraid of 44 yard line. Well, he does not run like a freshman out there. He absolutely made two beautiful moves in that 13-yard run to get it to the Efreda 45-yard line. He just has the vision and just it's, it's nothing really fancy, no, but isn't. enough to get him loose. You said it, too. Two great moves to get that 13-yard gain. So now Eastmont in back in Efreda territory at the 45-yard line. This time it's Keys right side. Can't get away and still roll, turning those legs and does get something positive out of it. It'll look like nothing. They'll give him about a yard. Caleb McMullen, again, he was the man latched on to the waist of the running back there on that uh, just a handoff straight around the right side. And uh, Goodmanson out blocking in front of him. They're going to give him just a gain of a yard on that play here for Corbin Keyes. And along with O'Neal, Eric, Caleb McMullen has played a good, a good game yeah. from his linebacker position. He has. We've called his name several times here tonight and uh, by the way O'Neill came shooting up again to take on a uh, blocker in front of that play second and nine for the Wildcats Gale under center this time two receivers left there's keys in motion he gets the handoff looking for some blockers and he's gonna get nowhere Tyler Libert again read that really well and that's a big loss for the Wildcats back in where are they gonna mark him it looks like at about the 48 yard line Put him out of the 49, so a loss of uh, six yards for Corbin Keys on that play, and a good job by the defender over there, just reading it, getting into the backfield, and uh, just totally breaking up that whole idea for the Wildcats. It just seems like, Eric, that some of those sweeps are just take too long to develop for the uh, Wildcats, too. They have some blockers there, but it just doesn't develop fast enough. Now third down and 14. Ball just across the 50 at the afraid of 49 yard line. Keys in motion once again. It's going to give to the up back, and that's Peterson. Nothing doing. Maybe two yards that time. That'll bring up fourth down for Eastmont. Punning unit on the field. Well, again, Caleb McMullen, the 5'10", 190 pound senior linebacker, shoots the gap, gets in the backfield, and just breaks up the whole play. So Pope on to punt for Eastmont. Conrad Zemer back at about his 15-yard line. Pope has punted well tonight. This will be his fourth punt of the night here for Eastmont. Good penetration by the Tigers, but a nice high, high kick Holy again cow. by Pope, and it goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. That was beautiful. It's like it's going to be marked right at the 10. And that's where Afredo will take over. First a down and 10, first possession of this second half. Ends up being a 35-yard punt, but that's one of the prettiest 35-yard punts you'll ever see. He had the guy right in his lap as he punted that ball away, and the hang time was amazing. Oh, man, beautiful high kick. That gave the Eastmont special teams players plenty of time to get downfield. So first down and 10 for the Tigers now. As I mentioned, first possession of this second half with 8-10 left to go in the third quarter. And the Tigers down 14-0. Well, let's see what kind of adjustments the Tigers have made here at halftime. Once again, three receivers split out to the left side, one to the right. Burns looks left, and it goes. Looks like it may have gotten tipped at the line, or no, like it almost it just, slipped out of his hand. It just slipped out of his hand. A tenor receiver on the flat was uh, Jamin uh, Froes over there, uh, but uh, yeah, not, not any close to anybody on the throw on the flat. Brings up second down. Eastmont, good penetration. And boy, they have had it all night long from the defensive line. Kellen Leonard, Alex DeFour, Caleb Garcia, Hunter Moore has also played a great game for Eastmont so far. And they all have really on defense. Second down at 10, Tigers. Same formation, four receivers in the set. Burns back to pass, hits the receiver over the middle. Once again, that is a Jamin Froes for a short gain up to about the 14-yard line. 
Ninth uh, completion for Gavin Burns in the ball game. First here in the second half and gets some positive yardage anyway. Good job by Froes to go up high to get that ball and corral it in and able to gain four yards on the play. So it'll bring up third down and six now for Efreda. Three receptions for Froes and 19 yards. Ball at the 14-yard line. Again, five receivers in this offensive set. Three to the left of Burns, two to the right. Burns back to pass, straight back drop, goes over the middle of the field. Receiver open momentarily. The big tight end, Kyle Hendrick, but good coverage by the Wildcats, too, and Apollo Mora. Yep, Mora right there. Read it uh, just like we talked about as the quarterback just locks on to his receiver, his eyes, and just read his eyes if you're a defensive back or a linebacker for Eastmont. We saw Max Prazier do that in that first half and come up with an interception return for a touchdown. So great field position possibly for Eastmont here. Good kick by Kendrick. Boy, he's boomed it tonight too, and that could be a penalty in the way of the receiving, uh, the re kick receiver, but not going to matter. Garcia is off to the races. Another flag comes in. Garcia still on his feet down the sideline and finally gets taken out of bounds at the 23-yard line, but two flags on the field. We could have offsetting penalties here. We'll see about a block, maybe an illegal block, and yeah, it was kick-catch interference is the call on the there's no the doubt about that field. He just didn't know where the ball was. And, oh, by the way, it's hitting it almost right in the head. And how about the job by Chance Garcia to wow. come up with that football? That was a great return. It really was. So I think we're going to punt this over again. He's going to return out to the 23. Afraid the kicking team is still on the field. And we'll see if Eastmont's return team comes back out there. Unfortunate for the Wildcats, Eric. They yeah. had the ball inside the 30-yard line. Now, I'm assuming that it's a flag on either team here. Obviously, we have kick-catch interference. That second flag, we'll see if it maybe is on a block on the return. Our officiating crew, again, Mike Penning, the referee, Terry Alton, the umpire. Kelly Campbell is the head linesman. Kirk Lyons, the line judge. And Robert Tidd is our back judge. And let's see what Mike Penning has to say here. He's going to say, you don't get that kick catch interference much. That's the signal there and a hold against the uh, return team. So, yes, we will reset it and repunt it here. Offsetting penalties. This will be the sixth punt of the night, by the way, uh, for. Ball remains at the 14 yard. Hendrick. Kyle Hendrick. Yeah. Well, he's done well, too, Eric. He has. And like uh, you said, no run at it at all. He takes about a step and then just boots it. I guess when you're 6'3", 225, it's <laughs> That's easy. what you do. <laughs> Another nice high kick by Kendrick. Bounces in front of Garcia. Probably should get away from that. And then it's down by a Tiger at the 34-yard line. Only a 24-yard punt that time around, one of his shortest of the night. So Eastmont, great field position. Let's see if the offense can do something here. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. Great service with a personal touch. That's their commitment to you. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa provides a different kind of full-service care that gives their clients peace of mind. Visit their showroom today. Luke Gale comes back out at quarterback, the freshman for the Wildcats. In motion is Keys. Fake handoff, and Gale's going to throw it up there. And with some contact downfield, but no flag on that. The ball was a little bit late and a little bit behind the intended receiver. Dylan Esparza, the intended receiver, down at about the 10-yard line. And he's asking the official, hey, hey, wait a minute. He made contact with me, and the he he's referring to is Conrad Zemer. Uh, they're just going to say an incomplete pass, second down and 10 for the Wildcats. Maybe they just didn't think it was catchable, Eric. It was a little bit behind it, but, boy, there was definitely contact. Don't have there. that in high school right. football, so it doesn't matter if the ball's catchable or not. If there's contact, it's contact. Boy, there was. Second and 10 now for the Wildcats. 649, left third quarter. Keys motion again. Hand off Peterson up the middle. Has some room right up the middle. Takes a defender with him across the 25 as Caleb McMullen then rides him down there. Well, you can certainly tell the coaching staff and why they like this freshman running the football as uh, he just has a nose for the hole. He's pretty patient, and then boom, he's gone. And I'll tell you, the three middle linemen that time really blew that hole open. Tony Ortega, Jonathan Corona, and Braden Folkers. 
Of course, the smallest one of that group, Eric, 250. So they got yeah. some beef up there. Well, and we talked about that. Get behind that big right. offensive line and just let them lean on the defense. Third and one. Handoff. Peterson has it easily and then gets stuffed at about the 21-yard line. Gained four. Jeremiah Barajas coming up on the tackle, but not before Peterson's able to gain the yardage necessary for a first down. In fact, he got five yards there to the 21. Boy, Eastmont's just still not really getting Ivan Corona that involved in this offense. They did a little bit, as we mentioned before halftime, but that's been about it. He just kind of standing in the slot and doing some blocking there. 12 carries, 80 yards for Peterson in the ball game. First How about and that 10. For the freshman. Great game. First and 10 at the Freda 21 yard line. Gale again under center. He's going to go back to pass. Three step drop goes over the middle of the field and almost picked off that time. The intended receiver was Brooks Travato. They've gone to that well a couple of times here in the first half and then try to go back to it here in the second half on a post pattern by Travato. But a good job of reading the quarterback there by the defensive back back there. It's uh, Jamin Froes, and he's able to just knock that ball away. And like you said, almost an interception. Eastmont had a six play drive on their first possession of this half, but now just kind of stalled out once again, second down and 10. Split out to the right side is Dylan Esparza. Keys in motion. Once again, it's Peterson up the middle. Spins his way down to about the 15-yard line. Just like that, six yards for the freshman. And again, on the tackle, Caleb McMullen. Yeah, McMullen's having a busy night. He's going to be a little sore tomorrow. But you got to love that, too, with your running back uh, as he is – falling forward, getting you positive yards. Even with the guy wrapped around him, he slung forward on the play. Yeah, that's a great, great statement, too, because that's exactly what he does. Third and six now as we approach five minutes left in this fast-moving third quarter. Yep. Flags fly. They wanted to go to Corona there, and uh, Ivan got a little bit too eager as he left a little early. And he was open. Yes, he was. <laughs> that might be why. <laughs> Another penalty on the Wildcats. Well, you said that they haven't used Ivan Corona much, and uh, it was obvious that he, from that wing back on the right, wanted to get downfield quickly, and he did just a little too quickly. <laughs> Seventh penalty, 66 yards against Eastmont here on the night. So it'll bring up a third down, about 10. Eastmont needs to get down to the 19-yard line. Not 19, to the nine yard line. Uh, I'd say yeah, about the 11. I guess it is. I'm looking at the board and it's all messed up. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, a big third down for Eastmont with a 14 0 lead. Can they add to it? Pitch and catch made at the 15 yard line. They're going to give them about the 14, but that's still going to bring up fourth down. A gain of five and still going to be short. First completion of the night for Luke Gale, believe it or not. Here comes Cameron Pope now, Eric. They're going to try a field goal here with 439 left in the third. I think Coach Don just wants to get some points on that board. Holder for Eastmont is Chance Garcia. Cameron Pope certainly has the leg, Eric. We saw that. And the wind at his back. Hold the snap, the kick. It's through the middle, and it is good. 4-16 left to go. Third quarter here at Wildcat Stadium. It's now Eastmont 17 and afraid of nothing. We're back to the field in 30 seconds. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. Well, the Eastmont uh, Wildcats extend the lead 17 to nothing on the 31-yard field goal by Cameron Prope. Our broadcast brought to you by Shalan Douglas Casa, court-appointed special advocates for children. Also by the Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Tell you more about that after this kickoff. 
All right, Cameron Pope to kick off as well. Six plays and 24 yards on that scoring drive for the Wildcats as they are bunched up on this kickoff. And Pope with that great leg. He's been doing great all night and gets another nice kickoff. It's taken by uh, Zemer. Was it Zemer, right? Yep. Oh, what a hard Holy hit cow. on the kick return. Chang. No, it's Goodmanson. Jack Goodmanson, 88, oh, got down there hit for the by tackle. Goodmanson. On the tackle for the Wildcats, Jack First Goodmanson. time we've mentioned his name tonight. Yes. So the second drive now of this third quarter for the uh, Freighted Tigers with 410 left to go here in the third quarter. The ball at their own 23-yard line. Gavin Burns, 9 of 24 for 92 yards tonight. And two a tough interceptions. One. one return for a touchdown. Yep. Once again, four receivers this time, three on the far side of the field. Delayed handoff, Zemer had a little bit of an opening, now gets away from the first tackle, and then gang tackled at about the 28-yard line. Tough run for five yards for Zemer. And again, it looked like it was so much more than that. It really did. But the Eastmont defense and, and Coach Michael Don has talked about his team speed defensively. And, and he believes that they can match up with anybody for speed to speed. And they're certainly showing that on how they can converge to the football here tonight. And they sure showed it the last time we broadcast an Eastmont game against Wenatchee. That yeah. defensive speed was the difference in that one. Now a second down and five for Afreda. Ball is at the 28-yard line. Burns shotgun. Zemer not in there this time as Burns throws it and almost picked off by Nathan Chang just over his outstretched hands. The intended receiver that time, Tony O'Neill. And it seems like, Eric, that when Burns is off on his throws, he's high. Yeah. All the passes have been high. He hasn't thrown anything in anybody's feet yet, really, tonight. Left-handed but... quarterback, he kind of drops down sidearm almost sometimes, and it seems when he drops down like that, that's when that ball kind of sails on him. It does sail on him. Now third down and five as Afreda desperately tries to get something going here on offense. Three receivers far side of the field. Burns is going to roll out to his right this time. Hunter Moore all over him, and he gets hit by Moore and then just throws it out of bounds. Clean hit back at the 15, and Burns will get up slow after that one. Boy, Hunter Moore has been hunting down Gavin Burns in the backfield all night long here, and that's a tough ask for your left-handed quarterback to try to scamper out to his right like that and about 20 yards from where the whole thing started and try to whiz that ball downfield. He's lucky it just was able to get it out of bounds. Two possessions now in this third quarter for Afreda. Six plays, nine yards total in their two possessions. Back deep for Eastmont. Chance Garcia stands at his 45-yard line. Another nice kick by Kendrick, or Hendrick rather, as the ball takes some weird bounces and then is finally downed at the 35-yard line. So Freda co or Eastmont comes out with their third drive now of the second half. 37-yard punt, their longest of the night. Pretty good into the teeth of that wind. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Enjoy your day at Highlander Golf Course. Reserve your next tee time or plan a party in one of their simulator rooms. You don't have to be a member to dine in style. Give them a call today. First and 10 Wildcats at their own 35-yard line. Another good start starting position. Here's Corona now with a rare handoff. Both hands on the football. Lowers his head over the 35. Might have got a yard. Gang tackle then right in front of the uh, Eastmont bench. One of the first players there. Big lineman. Got a flag down at the end of it. There was a little extracurricular block that was going on and possibly another penalty coming against Eastmont. And Coach Don not happy as he visits with the official over there. Another penalty, as Eric mentioned. It's been really the killer on offense for Eastmont tonight. Our officiating crew from the uh, Chelan County uh, Football Referees Association, uh, they may need new flags at the end of this one. <laughs> I mean, they've been using them a lot. And it's not like it's, uh, you know, too much. Obviously, if you're Eastmont coaching staff, it's too much. Uh, this, by the way, a dead ball, unsportsmanlike against the Wildcats. So yet another 15 yards. What's that, the third one, Eric, I think? That is their third, yeah, 15-yard penalty wow. of the night. Eight penalties, 81 yards wow. on the night. And as you mentioned, rightly accepted penalties. <laughs> yeah. So brings up a long first down at 24 for the Wildcats. Ball back at their 21-yard line. 
Once again, Gale stays in there under center with Peterson behind him. Keys in motion. Hand off again right up the middle. It's Peterson makes his way to the outside. He has all kinds of open field. Zemer chasing him down and will catch him, but not before Peterson gets all the way down to the 40-yard line. How about that? You have first and forever, and you hand it to the freshman and say, get as much as you can. Well, he certainly did there. 40 yards on that run. <laughs> And that'll help the stats big time for Gunnar Peterson. What a freshman. 125 yards wow. now on 14 carries thanks to that big gulp of yardage right there. Maybe that's the shot in the arm that this Wildcat offense needs now as we get late in the third quarter with 2.12 left to go. Keys in motion. Hand off again. Peterson up the middle protecting that football as afraid as trying to strip it out of there. And another five-yard gain for Peterson up to the 35. Jeremiah Barajas was the one trying to rip that ball away. Good job by the freshman to hang on tightly. Second down and five coming up after the five-yard gain. And boy, what presence of mind for a freshman to cover up that football when you see a lot of traffic up the middle. That's usually a junior or senior move and not a freshman. Playing beyond his years here, Grant. Yes, he is. A minute 36 now. Clock ticking, third quarter. Third down, second down and five, rather, for the Wildcats. Fake handoff to Corona, and it's up the middle. Peterson again as he takes a couple of Freda Tigers with him to almost the 25-yard line. Gets to the 26. Another quick gain of nine yards for the Wildcats. Boy, you know, I've mentioned that he, when he's patient finding the hole, he, again, plays more like an upperclassman. He does. And just with a lot of experience. This time, he sees the hole quickly. Boom, he's gone. Eggs, absolutely. Nice drive for the Wildcats here. This is going to be their fifth play. As the clock reaches almost one minute now left to go. Pretty fast-moving third quarter. Here's Gale. Hand off again. Who, why would you give it to anybody else? It's Peterson. <laughs> Nice move to the outside, gets seven. down to the 18. Seven, seven yards there. This is what Coach Don yards. wanted uh, right absolutely. here. Absolutely, absolutely. And Corbin Keyes does a great job of uh, faking like he's going to get the handoff and gives those linebackers just a little hesitation, and that's all that uh, Peterson needs back there. He's not doing, not doing anything fancy right now either. Same formation pretty much every uh, possession. Travato split out to the right side. Keys in motion. He's going to get it this time. Goodmanson blocking in front of him. Nice cut back by Keys, and he struggles and fights his way down to the 10-yard line. It didn't look like much and gets nine yards in the first down. How oh, about that? And good patience by Corbin Keys. And a flag comes flying in late. Well, let's see what Somebody the said something over there on that sideline, I believe. Corona threw his hands up after the flag was thrown. Unsportsmanlike again. This time it's on Afreda. So that'll be half the distance uh, beyond the end of the run here. So that's what the officiating crew needs to keep an eye on now. Frustration factor Absolutely. reaching for Afreda and uh, not to let things get out of control here. First and goal, Wildcats. Ball at the Tiger five-yard line. Eastmont up 17-0 and looking for more here late in this third quarter. 20 seconds to go. Half the distance, five yards against Efreda. That's only their third penalty for 25 yards in the game. Gale under center once again. Peterson behind him. Keys in motion. And uh, Peterson shakes the first tackle, keeps those legs driving. I think he might have got it <laughs> almost across the goal. They're going to mark him about a foot short. Give him four yards on that carry. And by the way, <laughs> <laughs> offensive lineman Gail Gonzalez wrapped him around the shoulder pads and was trying to usher him into the end zone the final two yards. <laughs> and that will do it for the end of our third quarter. After three here at Wildcat Stadium, it's Eastmont 17 and afraid of nothing. We're back with fourth quarter action in one minute. Stay with us.
When you call Dixie Dean and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's Automotive Alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's Automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. Eastman Wildcats. Three quarters in the books here at Wildcat Stadium, and it has been all the home team. Eastmont with a 17 0 lead as we head into the fourth quarter and looking for more as Eastmont has second down and goal at the one foot line. Can't even call it the one yard line, Eric. It's just right on the other side of the goal line. So we'll see what Eastmont does here. I don't think they're going to do anything fancy with this you one. You got to re reward Peterson, don't you? I would think. Nope. <laughs> Going to be a keeper by Gale up the middle and a touchdown. One yard run by quarterback Gale. And he's spun up now 23 0. Well, we talked at halftime, Grant, about what Eastmont should do here in the second half. And I think somebody was listening to us as we talked about why not just run the football and get behind that big offensive line and lean on the Tigers. And that's what they did on that drive. Nice 72 yard drive, too, for the Wildcats. Here's Pope with the uh, point after try. It's up and it's good. 11.56 left to go, fourth quarter. It's Eastmont 24 and afraid of nothing. We're back with more football from Wildcat Stadium in 30 seconds. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Shalane Douglas Casa is dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in our community-wide pinwheel project and help keep kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. Eight plays and 72 yards for the Wildcats on that touchdown drive. Took three minutes and seven seconds on the clock. The point after try, good. And Eastmont leads it now 24 to nothing. And Eric, and I, you and I were talking during the break. Honestly, this core could be a lot more than this right now. Oh, yeah. Eastmont's offense has kind of been stagnant tonight. And if they were kind of clicking on all cylinders, this could be 40-something to nothing Well, right we now. talked about in that first half, there was a pass opportunity that uh, probably was going to be a touchdown. Uh, didn't happen. They didn't connect. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that Coach Don and the Eastmont fans are happy to see that offense click, especially on that drive. Absolutely. As Cameron Pope gets set to kick off for the Wildcats. Tony O'Neill and Holy Zemer back cow. deep, and that goes right through the end zone. Let Pope me tell you right now, Cameron Pope, uh, if he wants to go on and, and do some kicking in college, I think he can. His kickoffs and his extra point, I mean, it's just pretty incredible what this uh, junior is doing here for the East Mall Wildcats with his foot. Our broadcast tonight, by the way, brought to you by Doghouse Motorsports, now featuring the full line of on- and off-road Husqvarna motorcycles and Sangster Motors. The American Challenge is on its Sangster Motors, home of the all-new Yukon SUV. Well, Afreda back out. There's their third possession is all in this second half, the first of the fourth quarter, and haven't had much going so far this half, nor have they in the entire game on offense. We'll see what quarterback Burns can do here. He's going to put it up going left down the sideline. Has a receiver there. Might be some interference. There was contact at midfield. Intended receiver that time, Tyler Libert. 
That was a nice toss that time by Burns. It was Chance Garcia left with uh, not much he could do as the receiver was getting past him and reached out, grabbed a hold of a little jersey. They both tumbled to the earth and the flag comes flying in. And unfortunately for Eastmont, that's been a common theme tonight. It really has. So that'll move Afreda up to about the 35 yard line. Nine penalties, Ooh. 96 yards against Eastmont here in the game. Well, you, you know, you tell somebody that with two turnovers and hardly any passing yards, they wouldn't be winning this game right no. now in a normal no, that's, situation. That's but. true. Can't afford to be doing that next week against Wenatchee, no. that's for sure. First and 10 now, Tigers. It's Zemer on the carry. Really, his first opening that he's had tonight is Chang makes the tackle, but not after a nine-yard gain. And we, we talked about that, too, about those plays that take so long to develop for Efreda. Just do quick hitters and just give your offensive line a chance. That time, the quick hitter. And by the way, 10th carry of the night. Now, finally, Conrad Zemer is in positive territory at nine yards. Wow, been a tough night on the ground for Afreda. Second and a short yard for the Tigers. Ball just shy of the Afreda 45 yard line, high snap. And oh, now gosh. we've got a fumble, I think. I think Afreda may have jumped on top of that. <laughs> well, we kind of joked about that in the first half. It's, it's not really, a, you know, a good joke to do, but Gavin Burns back there, that high snap, he just, you could almost see like, oh, here comes the red swarm <laughs> coming upon him, and he tried to just turn and hand it to Travis Hendrick and say, here, you take it. <laughs> Loss of six on that mishandled snap as Afreda now moves himself back inside their own 40-yard line at the 39. Four receivers in this set, three to the near side. That's the wide side of the field. Burns shotgun, goes back to pass, two-step drop, going left sideline again. He likes that throw. The ball is up for a jump ball, and it goes to the ground. That was basically a jump ball between the tight end, Kyle Hendrick. And Chance Garcia down there. Good coverage that time for Chance and just went up and both tried to high point the ball. Garcia knocked it away. That'll bring up fourth down. Incomplete. Ball remains at the 39. Busiest man on offense for uh, Efreda tonight, the punter Kyle Hendrick. Z stand Eighth punt of the night. Wow. Stands at his own 27. Garcia back at the Eastmont 30. Low wobbly kick this time from Hendrick. Not his best tonight as it rolls out of bounds and it looks like it will be almost where Garcia was standing at the 30 yard line. 30 yard punt that time around for Efreda. So Eastmont back on offense and I'm sure that uh, the coaching staff would love to see another drive like they had last time out. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Wenatchee Power Sports now featuring Polaris, Yamaha, KTM and Beta sales, parts and service. Also by August Edge Real State, your personal real estate agency with full service offered at just a 2% listing fee. So Eastmont, their fourth possession here in the second half, much more efficient on offense, a field goal, a touchdown, and a punt so far this half. Handoff to begin this drive. Up the middle, it's Keys, and he gets a big opening right up the middle. And I think that'll be enough for a first down right up to the 40-yard line. Now they put uh, Corbin back in the fullback position that time. And he does have 10 yards, and that's the longest run for Corbin Keys of the night. He's now at 10 carries and 43 yards on the night. I like Keys inside like that. He can use his quickness to kind of get around linemen up there, and he did a nice job that time. He spot 10 yards on that first play on this possession, gets it up to the 40. So we dip below 10 minutes now left to go in this fourth quarter. Handoff, delay handoff. It looks like Keys again. Maybe a yard, two yards on that carry. Yeah, you can tell the uh, former fullback, Gunnar Peterson, is now lining up as a wingback on the right side. And they had to adjust him a couple of times in position. And then he was supposed to have the end man on the line of scrimmage after he came in motion and block uh, big number 32, Winston Roberts, out there. Didn't do the greatest job on the block. And uh, it looks like he's kind of out of sorts. He's used to being that fullback, not necessarily the wingback in this right. offense. This time, Gale sets up in shotgun. Delay handoff, it's Keys once again. Jukes and jives his way past the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Gain of five, and that'll bring up third down. 
Still haven't heard much from Ivan Corona in the offense this half either. Well, if you're uh, able to make uh, positive movement on the ground uh, the way they are the last couple of possessions, then it doesn't really matter who it does doesn't it. matter. Wow. And, and Ivan Corona, just being around him a little bit here in this shortened season, uh, he is a kind of uh, guy that, hey, we win, I don't care. Very let's, unselfish. Let's just uh, play as a team here. As Corona sets back up in the slot, he's kind of been there all night long. Handoff, keys again up the middle, tries to get to the first down marker and does. Tough run for Corbin Keys of four yards, gets up to the 50 and another Eastmont first down. Well, they needed four yards and that's exactly what Corbin Keys was able to get him there. And again, we got to credit the offensive line here. Jonathan Corona, the center, uh, Brayden Folkers and Tony Ortega, the guards, Gail Gonzalez and Andrew Swan, the tackles. Absolutely. They have really done a better job blocking up front here in this second oh, half. I 100% uh, agree with that. And it's interesting what Eastmont's doing on offense. If Keys, as you mentioned, Eric, and Peterson just pretty much switch spots. Yep. Now Peterson's in motion a lot, and Keys gets those handoffs up the middle. Corona in motion this time, and it's going to Keys again up the middle. Nice big hole, and another nine yards on first down for the Wildcats. Chewing up this fourth quarter clock as well. 7.47 now left to go. You love it when your center, 5'9", 260 pounds, senior Jonathan Corona on senior night is nine yards downfield and the last to get up off the dirt after your running back just ran right behind you. Second and one for the Wildcats. The ball at the Afreda 41-yard line. Corona in motion again. Nothing fancy. Here it is. Keys up the middle. Hits it to the outside. Now makes a move up the middle. And a saving tackle that time made by Jamin Froes. As Keys gets all the way down to the 23-yard line. 18 yards on that one will give uh, uh, Corbin Keys 90 yards of rushing on the night on 15 carries. Got to love how he runs the football and then leaves that left hand out in front of him, kind of guiding himself as he goes along, picking his way downfield. How great is that for the Eastmont coaching staff to have both Peterson and Keys that can do that damage from that tailback position? Gale again under center as Keyes stays behind him. Now it's Peterson in motion. Handoff, Keyes up the middle. Another big hole as he grinds his way inside the 10, knocked back outside the 10, but not after a nice gain again. So about 13 yards. We got an Eastmont Wildcat uh, offensive lineman slow to get up here. And it looks like uh, injury, and you don't want to see that. And writhing on the ground was that uh, big lineman uh, behind the play. So we'll check on the lineman here. Our injury timeout, by the way, brought to you by Confluence Health. High quality care close to home. Confluence Health is dedicated to improving their patient's health with safe, high quality care in 12 communities. I think it might be the player you're just talking about, Jonathan Corona, Eric, the center. That gain, by the way, for uh, Corbin Keys on the last one, 14 yards. That'll put him over 100 yards on the night. Boy, and he started off so rugged. Remember, took a yeah. bad pitch and then had a loss on his second possession or second run. The player's up now, the they injured get, player. It's Jonathan Corona. They yeah, get him up is. to his feet, and that's good news that he can run off. That's one of those probably where you get uh, hit awkwardly and you feel something and it scares you a little it, bit. It scares you. It yeah. does. It, it, it bites you and you go, oh gosh, what yeah. happened? You know, that's, that's a great you description. Don't, you don't know until you stand up and you go, oh, okay, it's not so and bad. He's holding that right knee, so that does scare you when you feel something down there. By the way, a uh, great block on that last running play by uh, Tony Ortega. He pulled from the right, came back left, and just put a whale of a block on a defender to help spring that run. First and goal now for the Wildcats as time continues to click off Watch here the in the fourth quarter. Watch the exchange here, new center in there. Gale under center, good hand, good snap. Keys gets caught from behind that time for no gain. Caleb McMullen, who's played an outstanding defensive game for Afreda, in on that stop. Our broadcast here on the NCW Life Lake Channel brought to you by Jefferson, uh, Jeffers, Danielson, Son, and Aylward attorneys serving the Wenatchee Valley with the finest professional services since 1946. 
Well, I, I give credit to Efreda and the defensive side of the football. They've had some guys that have been putting some licks on Eastmont here tonight, and uh, just no give up. It's just a matter of attrition here in Absolutely. this game. So after no gain on that first down, second down and goal, had some movement it looked like. Corona, the ball carrier, would be ball carrier. And this is on Eastmont once again. Procedure penalty called against the Wildcats. Looked like some movement up on that line prior to that handoff. 101 yards and penalties now on Eastmont. Uh, 10 flags accepted and assessed against Eastmont here in the game. That moves the ball back to the 15-yard line of Afreda. So Eastmont facing a second down and 15. By the way, good news. Uh, Jonathan Corona back in the game. That is good news. Gail under center. Once again, it's keys behind him. The give is to Corona. I think that's the play they were going to run. And there's another flag as Corona runs into the end zone after a 14-yard carry. I think Jonathan Corona down again here, Eric. That knee might not be 100%. Corona made uh, what I thought was a great block for, okay, for the Wild Ivan. Ivan Corona. But they're marking it back. Holding Hold the against line. the offense. Goodness gracious. That was a scoring run by Ivan Corona, so it'll come back some more now. Stays second down with 5.20 left in the fourth quarter. What do you say you give it to Ivan again? Same, I would. Same exact play. I would. Let's get it blocked right this time. Yeah, let's. Because that's there. That play is there. We'll see what happens. Ball spotted actually about the 24-yard line. So second down and 24 for the Yeastmont Wildcats. Corona this time slot right side. Peterson the running back, but it's Keys behind Gale. Quick drop back and the pass goes out in the flat. It's caught out there. Travato, not much on that play. Gets down to about the 19 yard line. Five yards on the pass play. And that'll bring up third down and goal now. And Eastmont, about 18 yards to get there. Well, It'll get it here. I think we'll see Pope again. Yeah, that could be. Yep. He's a little quick pitch and uh, catch on the far side. That's the second completion out of seven attempts for Luke Gale here in the ball game. Both of those completions have been to Travato. Who's had a lot of playing time tonight. Once again, Keys, the tailback behind Gale. Corona in motion. He gets the pitch this time. Running left, 20, 15. Cuts it back up, lowers his head, gets down to about the 11. They're going to mark him at the 12-yard line. Ivan Corona, the Wildcat ball carrier. After a six-yard gain, and that's going to bring up fourth down and 12 for Eastmont. And here comes Cameron Pope. Why not? You got a kid that uh, with a leg uh, the way he is. Get some more tape on him uh, splitting the uprights. Our wind, it really has laid down quite a bit. So not much in his face here, if any at all. Already has a 31-yarder under his belt from uh, earlier in the third quarter. Now put this at the 19, so a 29-yard attempt. Here's the hole, the kick is up, and it was partially blocked, I believe, at the line of scrimmage, and this will be no good. It is a live ball, and it is picked up, too, or can it be run back? It could, but not from the end zone. Okay. Once it goes into the end zone, it becomes a dead ball. So the field goal try, no good. And Afredo will take over back on offense with three minutes and 15 seconds left to go in this one. Eastmont leading it 24 nothing. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Laura Mounter Real Estate, rated world's best real estate firm for the Wenatchee Valley in 2020. And One Way Construction. One Way is a premier custom home builder and general contractor in North Central Washington. One Way Construction, your project, your way. Well, any subs do you think? Or, no, I see the main quarterback, Gavin Burns, coming out there to yeah. lead for Eastmont, I think, will, though, Eric. It looks like a few... 
substitute defensive players are out there. Yahir Arellano is out there now, number 55 for Eastmont. He's a senior, Eric. It's great that he gets to get out there. Handoff, delayed handoff. Zemer has some room this time. Gets around the right side, 35, and then is wrestled out of bounds just shy, I believe. Now they're going to mark him right at the 40-yard line, so a 20-yard run on first down. And that is the second longest play from scrimmage tonight. Had a 23-yard play in the first quarter, and this has been it since then. That gives Zemer 11 carries and 29 yards on the uh, ball game. And, uh, yeah, that tells you how it is. Longest run of the night at 20 yards, and <laughs> he's got 29 total for the night. Zemer's had some tough runs tonight for sure. Just over three minutes now left to go, fourth quarter. Three receivers split out weak side of the field. Handoff goes to number big number 35. That's Travis Hendrick, who tries the left side, but not much there. Max Prazer runs him down after no gain. How about that defensive play? Yeah, just again, speed for Eastmont. It looked like there was something available there for Efreda offensively, but the defense swarms and holds him for no gain. It'll be second down at 10. Clock continues to tick away on the Efreda Tigers here at 234 left we now. do have a different quarterback it is it's it is their back, backup Ethan Black watched him throw in warm-ups too he's a good thrower but we'll see what happens here quick pitch oh and it's intercepted right into the hands of Chang Nathan Chang 20 10 touchdown Eastmont 40 yard interception second pick six for the night for the defense for the Wildcats and made the order served on a platter for Nathan Chang and you gotta love that that young man gets rewarded the sophomore for Eastmont returns it for 40 yards and the second defensive score of the night. Max Prazer also with a 66-yard interception return in the first half, and now Chang with a 40-yard interception return, and it's almost fitting that the defense has scored twice in this game. They've played so well. And we're now at 30 to nothing as Cameron Pope on to make it 31 nothing. Here's the kick by Pope. Did it get through the uprights? And no, he missed it to the right. So a 2.15 left to go in this fourth quarter. It's Eastmont 30, no free to nothing. We're back here in the field in 30 seconds. So the Eastmont Wildcat defense comes up big for the second time tonight. A 40-yard interception return by Nathan Chang. The uh, point after try, no good. And Eastmont now leads it 30 to nothing with two minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Defensive uh, prowess shown tonight Boy. here for Eastmont uh, all the way through. As Pope gets set to kick, once again, Tony O'Neill back deep as well as Conrad Zemer. Here's the kick, Pope again, a boomer all the way down and it hits the goal line this time. I think <laughs> you're right, Eric. Shane uh, got the word from uh -huh. the coach that, eh, why don't you just let that go in the end zone? <laughs> Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. Pick up and drop off available. Stop by their website at globalcarcare.net. Also by Les Schwab Tires. Les Schwab takes your safety seriously every time you stop by. Lots of substitutes into the ball game now on both sides. We'll try to get you everyone that we can. Staying in there at quarterback is Ethan Black for the uh, Tigers. Also at running back is big Travis Hendrick. Carson Burns in motion there. Black, the snap, handoff goes, a big hit to uh, Hendrick. 
after about yeah. a three-yard gain. Max Prazer, by Ooh. the way, is still out there. <laughs> he laid that hit after a four-yard gain. He probably refuses to go out. <laughs> yeah, not on senior night, Grant. Right? As we dip under two minutes left to go in this one, it's been all Eastmont Wildcats tonight as Eastmont looking to go to three and one on this five-game season. Here comes Max Prazer out of the game, replaced by Andrew Van Well. That'll be it for Prazer here in the ball game. Boy, what a player he is. Three receivers, trips right, ball nope. is fumbled and then recovered by Hendrick, but that's going to be a big loss for Afreda back past the original line of scrimmage, Bo. That's going to be a loss of about seven yards. Hendrick now three carries minus three after that fumble, and uh, he recovers it. Third and 12 coming up for the Tigers. And if you're afraid, of, uh, at this point, you're just like, oh, let's Seven let's plays stop for bleeding. negative yards tonight, Eric. Yeah, let's stop That's the bleeding tough. and get out of here. Clock moving now, 59 seconds left to go. Snap, black the throw in the flat, and another drop ball. This time it was Jeremias Barajas. And that goes incomplete, bringing up Barajas. fourth down. Incomplete for the Tigers. So another three and out. Four afraid of boy have really struggled here in this second half. 12, 13, 14 plays, one interception for a touchdown, and about four yards total in this half for the offense for Afreda. As Hendrick comes out to punt, Kyle Hendrick, the big fullback, or big tight end, I should say. And he stands at about his own six yard line. Booming oh high gosh. kick again. What that's, a punt. That's incredible. It drops at the 42 and then is down at about the 41 yard line. And that's where Afraid, or Eastmont will take over. 44 yard wow. punt that time around. Best of the night on a, uh, you never want to say this if you're uh, saying your punter is your busiest guy all night. <laughs> that's true. So Eastmont will have it first down at 10. Basically, can just run out this clock now. 45.8 seconds left to go. And Eastmont in victory formation, as they call it out there, where the quarterback will just simply take a knee now. And that'll be it for the Eastmont Wildcats, as they will, as I mentioned earlier, improve to 3-1. and one. How about that, Eric? They had Max Prazer out there taking that snap. He's taking the knee now, and he's going to do it again, the senior. That's pretty cool. As Prazer stays out there at quarterback. Might be the only time in his career that he's played quarterback. <laughs> That's a great celebration for him and uh, as a senior, why not? Absolutely. As Prazer takes a knee once again, and that should do it. Here at Wildcat Stadium, where the Eastmont Wildcats have taken care of business and defeated the Afraid of Tigers here tonight by a final score of 30 to nothing. We'll take a two minute timeout, come back with some stats. Eric will head down to the field with some post game interviews and all that coming up in two minutes here on the NCW Life Channel. Highlander Golf Course is proud to announce their two new state-of-the-art full-swing golf simulators with over 80 courses of virtual golf to choose from year-round. Or try their laser shot simulated firearm program or gaming with football, basketball, and much more. Enjoy Highlander food and drink service from their full-service bar and grill in the comfort of their simulator room. Call the Highlander Pro Shop to book your time at 884-4653. That's 884-4653. Take on the new year in a new Ford from Pat Armstrong Ford. From premium grade muscle to unparalleled performance, take on any payload. The all new 2021 Ford F-150 at Pat Armstrong Ford. Take on any adventure. Take on every thrill. The all new 2021 Bronco Sport and 2021 Mustang Mach-E. Built to take on every resolution at Pat Armstrong Ford. We are community strong in East Wenatchee. If you're like me, you're already dreaming about the summer, enjoying it with friends and family in the backyard. Don't get discouraged with the chilly breeze of spring just yet. There is still work to be done and the warmer temperatures are just around the corner. 
If you've been thinking about when to get your backyard ready for summer, come on down to Blue Lagoon, now scheduling pool openings. Ask us why we think you should open your pool sooner rather than later. Call today. Scheduling is filling up fast. Wenatchee Power Sports not only has a new owner, but an all-new attitude to match. Speaking of attitude, check out the 2021 models arriving now. Polaris snowmobiles, ATVs and side-by-sides. Yamaha motorcycles, watercraft, ATVs and side-by-sides. KTM motorcycles and the latest edition Beta high-performance motorcycles. Coming this fall, a huge demo event featuring the latest and hottest off-road machines. It's all at the retuned Wenatchee Power Sports, where maximum performance is a way of life. 3031 GS Center Road in North Wenatchee open Tuesday through Saturday. Grant Olson along with Eric Granstrom back at Wildcat Stadium where the Eastmont Wildcats have improved to three and one on this short season with a 30 to nothing win over the visiting Afreda Tigers. And I'll tell you what, it was all Eastmont tonight in this one actually from the get go as Eastmont ran a total of 54 plays in this ball game compared to 46 for Afreda, but it was lopsided in the second half where Eastmont ran 31 plays and Afreda only 14 plays. Play. Scoring possessions in this second half. Eastmont scored on their second possession of the half. They drove six plays, went 24 yards, and took two minutes off the clock. The uh, field goal, 31 yarder by Cameron Pope, was good, and that made the score 17 to nothing here in the second half. Eastmont scored on their possession right after that, too, in the third quarter. Uh, eight play, 72 yard drive for the Wildcats on that scoring play. Took three minutes, seven seconds off the clock. The uh, touchdown and extra point good, and that made the score 24 to nothing. And then on the fourth possession for Afreda in the uh, fourth quarter, through an interception, and Nathan Chang ran it back 44 yards for a touchdown, and the extra point attempt was no good, and that ended up being our final score. Eastmont 30 and Afreda nothing. East, uh, Eastmont in the ball game only punted the ball four times, while Afreda punted it nine times, and as I mentioned, lopsided in plays in this second half. Eastmont ran 31, Afreda only 14. In fact, uh, Afreda in the second half, almost negative yardage on the ground. And we'll talk more complete stats. We'll take another two-minute timeout and come back at individual stats for the game as our coverage of Eastmont Wildcat football continues right after this. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. first six-function multi-pro tailgate, available in the GMC Sierra. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local sports broadcasts. They've been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, risks, and accomplishments. At JDSA Law, they salute our local athletes and wish them well on another excellent season of competition. Hi, I'm Shauna Larson. I'm the designated broker here at Laura Mounter Real Estate. We are a locally owned firm and we've worked hard to earn our reputation of always doing business the right way. Laura Mounter Real Estate is continually investing in the best technologies and highest quality marketing. For these reasons, our community has voted us the world's best real estate office for the past five years. If you have real estate needs, let a Laura Mounter real estate agent show you the difference.
Reynoldson back at Wildcat Stadium where the Eastmont Wildcats have defeated the Afreda Tigers by a final score of 30 to nothing. Now let's quickly run through some individual stats here before we head down to Eric at the, on the field. First for the Afreda Tigers on the ground, Conrad Zemer ended up carrying 11 times for 29 yards. Tony O'Neill, one carry for four yards. Gavin Burns, two carries for minus 22 yards. Libert had a carry for five yards and Travis Hendrick, three carries for minus three yards. In the half, Afreda had 11 carries for minus 13 yards. And through the air on the night, uh, the quarterback Gavin Burns, 9 of 27 for 92 yards. And so Afreda on the night, 13 yards rushing, 92 yards passing with three interceptions for a total in the ball game of 105 yards. On the other side of the field, the victorious Eastmont Wildcats, boy, they did it all on the ground tonight. Corbin Keyes, 17 carries, 104 yards. Also, Ivan Corona had six carries for 26 yards. The freshman, what a night for him. Gunnar Peterson, 18 carries, 150 yards. And also Luke Gale, the quarterback, had one carry for one yard and a touchdown. Through the air, Luke Gale struggled a bit tonight. He was two for seven for five yards through the air. Also, Ivan Corona was 0 for one through the air, receiving Brooks Travato. He led the way for Eastmont with two catches for 10 yards. In the half, rushing the ball, Eastmont 16 carries, 86 yards, passing it 0 for 4 with an interception for no yards for a total of 86 second half yards. But for the game, the Eastmont Wildcats 42 carries, 281 yards, and as I mentioned, 10 yards of passing for a total of 291 yards. So the Eastmont Wildcats at home in this their fourth game of this shortened season take care of business on their home field dominating on defense and pretty much doing whatever they wanted on offense as well. The final score once again here from Eastmont was Eastmont 30 and afraid of nothing. Eric Granstrom set to go at the end of the field to talk to uh, the winning coach Mike Don and we'll do that when we take a two minute timeout and come right back. Stay with us. Sure glad we went to Les Schwab. I'm glad the baby's still happy. Well, I'm just glad that along with tires, Les Schwab also does brakes, alignment, and a bunch of other safety services. I mean, if we had gone to a cheap tire store instead, I'd be a doggone wreck. My thoughts exactly. During the Les Schwab Spring Tire Sale, save up to $200 when you bundle select tires, wheels, and brakes. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Shalane Douglas Casa is dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in our community-wide pinwheel project and help keep kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. Building, it's in our blood. Building something out of nothing, it takes heart, grit, and hard work. At One Way Construction, our crew is our family. With decades of contracting experience and our in-house design team, we bring a unique perspective to building. We know that if we work together, we are capable of reaching heights that are impossible to reach alone. The possibilities are endless. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's Automotive Alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's Automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. 
We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. When you call Dixie Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma of stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. Well, the Eastmont Wildcats celebrated senior night in fashion here, downing the Freighted Tigers by a score of 30 to nothing. Got a couple of field goals, get a couple of defensive scores along the way. And so defense is going to be the focus here on the postgame show. Thanks for joining us on the NCW Life Channel. Eric Grandstrom, Grant Olson finishing things up in the booth, and he's probably taking things apart by now. Uh, we uh, There's a long discussion that's been going on postgame with Coach Michael Don and his team. Now, there's a lot not to be happy about about, including 11 penalties at 111 yards against Eastmont here this evening. The offense took forever to get going. They did get it going in the second half uh, with some uh, great running by the freshman running back. We're going to concentrate, though, on the defense's ability to make the stops and hold Efreda to under 100 yards of total offense here in the ball game. Of course, the big 64 or 66 yard uh, interception return touchdown by Max Prazer. We're going to talk to Max coming up. Also, Nathan Chang is going to join us here on the postgame show as well. Now, we could have uh, invited the whole defense over here. Uh, great game by Hunter Moore, also by Chance uh, Garcia. But we're going to talk to those two young men as well as uh, Coach Michael Don here as the postgame show continues where Eastmont has knocked off the Afraid of Tigers by a score of 30 to nothing here tonight at Eastmont High School. Again, one more week to go. We've got the Bridge of Sportsmanship coming up next Friday at Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl. We're looking forward to that one as well as the Wenatchee Panthers will celebrate senior night. We don't have any other scores, unfortunately, to pass along here this evening, but uh, be sure and join us Monday morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We'll have highlights of this game as well as uh, some scores throughout the weekend. We'll take a quick break and come back, and hopefully the guys will be done talking to their coach or the coach will be done talking to them. We'll see coming up here next as the postgame show continues on the NCW Life channel. At Earthwise Pet, we take an all-natural approach to wellness and nutrition. Our professional certified groomers were trained by the best in the Pacific Northwest. Our staff here at Earthwise Pet are all certified in pet nutrition. We are here to help you select the perfect food, supplement, and anything else you may need to make sure your pet is living its best and most healthy life. Earthwise Pet, nutrition center and wellness spa. Online or in the store, we are here for you. Wenatchee Power Sports not only has a new owner, but an all-new attitude to match. Speaking of attitude, check out the 2021 models arriving now. Polaris snowmobiles, ATVs and side-by-sides. Yamaha motorcycles, watercraft, ATVs and side-by-sides. KTM motorcycles and the latest edition Beta high-performance motorcycles. Coming this fall, a huge demo event featuring the latest and hottest off-road machines. It's all at the retune Wenatchee Power Sports, where maximum performance is a way of life. 3031. One GS Center Road in North Wenatchee open Tuesday through Saturday. Save Mart is the place to go if you are in the market for home furnishings. They have rows and rows of sofas, love seats, recliners, and chairs in a vast array of fabrics and colors. Name brands include Ashley, Best, and Stanton. With pictures, lamps, and tables to complement your new furniture, Save Mart is a one stop shop. Save Mart offers 12 month special financing on approval of credit. Save Mart also offers free delivery, setup, and haul away in their service area. Serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 50 years. Located on North Wenatchee Avenue or visit online at SaveMart.net. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care. They speak your car's language. Danke schön.
When you call Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local independent trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. Welcome back one more time around here to Eastmont High School where the Wildcats knock off the Afraid of Tigers by a score of 30 to nothing. A couple of defensive touchdowns here tonight uh, by Max Prazier, a 66-yard interception return. Also, Nathan Chang, the sophomore, came up with an interception return late in the ballgame. That was the final score of the night as Eastmont gets the victory by a final of 30 to nothing. And it looks like they're just now finally wrapping up their uh, talk with the coach back behind us. So we'll see if they can get here in a matter of moments and uh, we're able to talk to Max Prazier as well as Nathan Chang here on the postgame show on the NCW Life Channel. The wind is still blowing here and we're also keeping a close eye on the uh, lights to make sure that we don't lose any lights that topple over in the breeze as well. Again, reminder, we have soccer coming up tomorrow on the NCW Life Channel where the Wenatchee Panthers host the Moses Lake Chiefs. One o'clock kickoff at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl. I'll be alongside with Matt Wisen and the play-by-play, -play, the pregame at 12.50 tomorrow right here on the NCW Life Channel. And then volleyball tomorrow night at Wenatchee High School where the Panthers will host the East Mont Wildcats. They'll actually get things going early in the morning at 10.30 tomorrow at Wenatchee High School. But we'll be on the air at 6.30, well, 6.20 with a pregame, 6.30 with the first serve as Wenatchee and Eastmont meet on the court tomorrow at Wenatchee High School. Again, a couple of uh, a, a busy weekend for yours truly here on the NCW Life Channel, your home for local sports. So we're looking, we're looking, we're not seeing. Oh, here they come. There we go. Max, come on over here, buddy. I didn't know if you guys were going to get done with coach or not. So, uh, first of all, congratulations on the win tonight. Thank win you. is a win is a win, even yeah. though it wasn't the prettiest. But boy, I'll yeah. say it was pretty for you guys defensively. Yeah, I know. I mean, we we shut them out. You know, that's a that's. I mean, can't get any better than that. You know, I had two defensive touchdowns and me and, and Chang over here. Um, you know, young guys stepped up and played their heart out, and you know, I'm proud of them. We got to talk about your pick six, buddy. Uh, yeah. First of all, they try a screen pass. You read that perfectly. Tell me, walk us through that play. Honestly, I don't even remember it. <laughs> I remember running. That's all. And you know, I was run, running out of gas towards the end there. But you know, I saw that quarterback coming. I was like, I can't get tackled by a quarterback. <laughs> I, I wouldn't hear the end of it. So. You know, I just had to make it happen. Now, you're going to see this on film. I don't know if you saw it at the time, but I think it was Heimbigner that sprinted past you, and it looked like he had a good opportunity to block that quarterback, but they missed him. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I think I, I think I threw Logan Schneider into another guy. You know, we're not, we're not used to running the ball, so we just got to do our best. But uh, nice finish, though, getting into the end zone. Congratulations Thank you. Thank on you. I appreciate that. appreciate it. So, yeah, uh, shutout. I mean, it's hard to do. It doesn't matter yeah. who you're playing. Uh, they kept trying and trying, and they got in sniffing distance a couple of times. How much pride do you guys take in being able to put that goose egg up on the board? You know, that, I mean, that's our big thing. We always talk about nobody scores on us. We don't care who it is. You know, we, that, that's our mentality in the red zone. You know, no one scores on us, and people take that to heart, and, you know, that, and that's that's what we did. All right, we got this sophomore coming in the wings here. Oh yeah. Tell me about Nathan Chang. What's something we should know about this kid uh, before we bring him on camera? You know, he's for I don't even know how tall he is, but 145 five, 145 pounds. He'll go in there and you know crack some 200 200 pound plus kids. You know, and he's not afraid of anybody. Well, Max, congratulations. Uh, again, we wanted to tell the folks, you're going to play at the next level. Where are yeah. you heading to next uh, year? Eastern Oregon University. Okay. Uh, that's a good place for skiing and for hunting and oh, things yeah. like that, yep. too, if you're yep. into that. All that so. kind of stuff. Well, Max, congratulations on the win tonight and the big pick six. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the Bridge of Sportsmanship Thank next you. week. I appreciate it. You bet. Max Prazer, right. come on in here, Nathan Chang. We'll do this live on the air. We don't care. Nathan Chang joining us here also with a pick six tonight. Tell me about that play. Uh, I just hit the guy and looked over and the ball was coming straight for me and all I was thinking was don't drop the ball don't drop the ball <laughs> and so I caught it with my body and just took off and, uh, 
I saw number 30 right in the next to me. I'm like, damn, I'm slow. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you think you were going to get in the end zone? I mean, you oh, had yeah. a, a oh, few yeah. guys, oh, you, yeah. you knew. He, the, he was not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one thing that I've been impressed with ever since we saw you really getting some serious playing time on defense mm -hmm. last year is that despite your diminutive size, 5'6", five, five, by the way, um, you're not afraid to stick your nose in there. No. Um, I've been doing football for a while. I'm a wrestler too, so I'm just not afraid to hit anybody. I mean, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So. That's right. That's right. Well, let's talk about your de your offense was kind of struggling in that first half. Yeah. It was up to you guys to to try to make things happen while the offense kind of got the things under gear. Um, talk about uh, your guys' performance tonight and being able to put that goose egg up on the board. Um, we came in thinking. We're not, they're not going to score any points on us. We're going to do a shutout, you know. They're a 1A school, you know. They're not supposed to be with us. I mean, obviously they showed us on yeah. offense, but defense we showed us, showed them how we are. So this set you up well for uh, the Bridge of Sportsmanship next week against mm -hmm. Wenatchee? You guys think you can uh, take two out of those guys in one year? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. Nathan Chang this. joining us here on the post game show. Congratulations on the big win tonight. Thank you. And the pick six. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I'll take that from you. And uh, I don't see Coach Don anywhere. It looks like he's probably had enough of the night, and so too have we. Thanks to our whole crew here helping us with the broadcast. Dan Kuntz, our line producer, and also was, by the way, working the van tonight. So thanks to Dan for the yeoman's work there. Also to Josiah Davison, who was uh, swapping in, doing some van uh, operation for us as well. Malcolm, Malcolm Whitehall back in the studios. Also for all of our camera crew here tonight, we had Jessica Medina and Rachel Mandelis. We had Will Vanderzee and Levi Day. And of course, I cannot forget my better half, Marion Granstrom, on camera too, once again here this evening. That's going to do it for football here tonight, where the East Mall Wildcats knock off the Afraid of Tigers by a final of 30 to nothing. Be sure and join us again next Friday for more football and some soccer and volleyball coming up tomorrow here on your home of local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Have a good night, everybody. Counterplay inside, picking his way back to the 10, to the 5. The Thanks for watching High School Sports on your home for local high school sports, the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast was brought to you by August Edge Real Estate, Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Doghouse Motorsports, Global Car Care, The Highlander Golf Course and Grill, JDSA Law, Laura Mounter Real Estate, Les Schwab Tires, One Way Construction, Pat Armstrong Ford Lincoln, Save Mart, Sankster Motors, Wenatchee Power Sports, Earthwise Pet, and Chelan Douglas Casa. Stay with us all year long for high school sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. We now return to regular programming already in progress.